If you're talking, I can't hear you. Everybody, salute to the tribe. We're hip hop and comics, comics and hip hop. We're a niche, we're a niche channel. We're a niche channel. Reserved for the best is super dope. I do sell comics. Check me out on Instagram at six the underscore element underscore comics. Yeah, because comic books are the sixth element of hip hop. What up, what up, what up? Peace, peace to everybody, man. Thank y'all for coming and checking us out. It is the sixth element of hip-hop. I am your host, Reno Noir. Not the same Reno where Jeremy Renner was injured. Uh, that's a state. I'm, I'm a guy. So, but uh, yeah, man, we are, uh, We Stu Dog is back. Uh, he, he, he was out Saturday. I think he's back. You there, Stu? Hit him with the Hogan. Is he, is he there? No, I don't know, Stu, if you're there. We can't hear you. Welcome to the new year of Sixth Element. Corey Adger in the building. Salute. It is 2023, guys. And uh, it's going to be a good year. Uh, I know everybody says that every year, but uh, I feel it in my bones. I feel it in my bones. Uh, something different about this year. I, know, I don't feel this every year. I think this is going to be a good one, uh, especially for the channel, man. We got We got a lot of stuff lined up. Good stuff down the pipe. We got some great interviews lined up this year, uh, starting right off January 30th. We got my man Beto from Beto Art coming here and chop it up with us and show us some of, you know, not show us, this, but this is some of his work. I mean, obviously, there's like the Eternals comic book made into Outcast, Fantastic Four made into Tribe Called Quest, you know what I'm saying? Rock Him and Wu Tang, Secret Wars. The West Coast, you know, so the West West Coast dudes. You got, you know, Snoop and Pac and NWA, everybody there for the the Avengers uh, comic. So all these covers were made by this 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 guy Beto. And you know, when I was doing research for the the Sixth Element, you know, and I was thinking about I wanted to do a, a hip hop and comic book channel, you know, and talk about hip hop and comics and the way that they correlate. You know, not just talk about hip hop and talk about comics, but talk about how hip hop and comics you know, are, you know, very, very uh, related in, in ever since the beginning of hip hop. And that's why we call this channel the sixth element of hip hop, because, you know, five elements of hip hop that we normally know is MC and DJ and break day and sing graffiti and fashion. But the sixth element of hip hop is comic books. And I'm not the only one that says that. Uh, like I said, I was doing research to, to sort of back that claim up or whatever and in my research i found the artwork in here of my man beto here and uh it was very inspirational and very sort of uh confirmational you know what i'm saying it confirmed it for me it let me know that i was down the right going down the right path sada what's up sada we see we hear you but we don't see you Stu dog what's up man you here Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm here. Yes, sir. How was your weekend, dope. bro? How was your New Year's Eve? It's good, man. New Year's Eve was good. I had to work, but it was good, man. Um, you know, 2023 is here. You know, everybody I know cooks. Got your, got your, your New Year's resolutions and all that out on deck, ready to rock. <laughs> but it was a good. It was a good time. I spent I spent a lot of time with family this year, man, and it, it was it was good because. Um, since the pandemic, I haven't been able to really spend a lot of time with my family the way that I normally would. Um, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It just it, it literally felt like it felt good, man. It felt like Christmas. It felt Thanksgiving was good. Christmas was good. New Year's it just felt good, man, to be be around people that you know in all your life, man. Yeah, yeah. That's important, man. That's important. Uh, Sada, what's up, Sada? We what? hear you. Yes, sorry. I just I don't have my camera on at this very second, but I'm about to turn it on. Okay. Oh, take your time. Take your time with the camera. Oh, there she is. There she go. 
and, 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 and shout out to Sada from Cooks. Woo! And, uh, and Happy Cooks 2023. Uh, right. Shout out to Cooks. Yeah, what's up, Cooks, man? How you what's feeling, up, man? Cooks? Yeah, he rocked it out with us Saturday. He did the show with me Saturday, and uh, we had a blast. Al Mega came on. It was me, Cooks, Al Mega, and Sever. And we chopped it up, man. Had a had a dope little New Year's show. And then we went over to Instagram to Cook's Instagram live channel. And we did another talk at midnight, like at, as the ball dropped, you know, and, you know, and, and brought in the new year on IG with the comic, uh, you know what I'm saying, the comic dudes and all of that. But uh Cooks is doing research for the show. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We and me and Cooks, we we started that Dirty South show where we was talking about the Dirty South, and we, we definitely got part two coming for y'all. Uh so don't worry, guys. I know y'all feeling for that part two, but it's on the way. But um, so it was it was a great, you know, great New Year's for, for most of us, but some of us not so much. Uh my man Jeremy Renner, uh you, you know, the guy that plays Hawkeye and Ronan was critically injured in a snow plowing accident uh in his uh, his Lake Tahoe home. Uh he was hospitalized in critical condition after being injured in a in a weather related snow plow accident in his Tahoe, Nevada uh you know compound and he uh the uh the plow ran his leg over and caused mm. you know blood loss so severe that that he was you know rushed to the hospital critical condition and uh he's stable now apparently at this at the time of this 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 show but um they said, as of now, we can confirm Jeremy's in critical but stable condition with injuries suffered after experiencing a weather-related accident while plowing snow earlier today. Sam Mast uh, told CNN in a statement, he said he's with his family uh, is, and his family is with him and he's receiving excellent care. Uh, officers oh, responded to... Yeah, and, and, and the police came because, well, you know, they responded to the traumatic injury, but they've actually opened a criminal, not a criminal, but a, uh, an investigation. It's investigation, yeah. Well, they had to, inve right. whenever there's an accident, um, the police have to do an investigation to determine the nature of the accident, who was at fault, who wasn't, right. and see who they're right. going to hold, who has to be held responsible. Because um, mm -hmm. if, if, somebody, if somebody's life was involved, where it was either, taken almost taken or, or they were right. they were badly hurt or injured mm -hmm. um a police report has to be filed and as in america you know we like to sue everybody in america so <laughs> right that uh that helps out with lawsuits and things of that nature mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and, and also to make sure that there was no criminal there was no right. criminal intent you know what I mean? and that's like, and that's you know, you know in this particular situation apparently they're saying that there was uh a lot of safety features on the snow plow that should have prevented it, but for whatever reason didn't. And based on that, they're they're investigating to see why those safety features didn't kick in or work or whatever. And then, like you said, Stu, that's either going to go lawsuit or criminal from that part. Either somebody tampered with it, right. or yeah, because if it, well, nah, right. Right. if it, yeah, because if it's like that, now they can say, well, listen. These features were supposed to be activated on the snow plow when you were operating right. it. Did you have a license to operate it? Mm -hmm. Or are you trained to operate it? He may be. And if that's, right. And if that's no, 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 he's going to get a summons. That's right. He's going to have to pay a large, <laughs> he's gonna have to pay a large fine. Um, or maybe do some jail time, but we know that that don't happen to people with money. So yeah. He'll, he'll you know, he'll, he'll, I'm trying to figure out like, how fine. did his leg end up under the thing? Like, how did that even yeah. happen? So there's definitely something has to be investigated maybe somebody else was driving it maybe yeah, maybe yeah. Somebody else was driving it and he was in front of it and you know uh you never know I, I i listen i all i know the articles i've read they're not saying anything other than what reno read and that's it that they're not they're not saying anything and what reno read was more than what i got because they was just like at the mm -hmm. time the sheriff's department was just doing an investigation and they didn't say anything else so we just gotta wait and see it's gonna come out sooner or later trust me we well, I got, I do have some. Um, they 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 gave us some footage from 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 TMZ and uh, some footage of the plow. I don't know if it's the accident, what exactly, but uh, I'll show you guys what what I'm seeing here. Let me get this, pull this up for you. Share that. Bada bing. There you go. 
All right, so I don't know if you'll hear it, but. Oh, that's a helicopter. Okay. That's yeah, the helicopter. Him. That's taking him. Taking him. Yes, that's his. Uh... Yeah, you can hear, you can see it lifting off there. That's that's actually him getting airlifted. Um, yeah, Snowcat being. All right, so that's that's Renner getting taken off, and then there's the uh, the actual snow plow itself getting towed away right here. Let's see if you can catch it, catch a glimpse of it. There it is on the back of that truck. There it is. So you see what it is. It's like one of those snow cats. Uh. Shitty situation. Yeah. Uh, it says that the new video shows Renner's hop helicopter flight to the hospital shortly after his horrific snow plowing accident. TMZ da, 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 da. video obtained by TMZ. Uh, starts right after the two-time Oscar nominee was loaded onto the chopper Sunday around 9.50 a.m. Eyewitnesses tell us Jeremy was plowing the road a quarter mile from his Tahoe home so his family could get out after a massive New Year's Eve storm. According to a neighbor, the plowing machine called a snowcat accidentally ran over one of Jeremy's legs and he was losing a lot of blood from the injury. We're told another neighbor who's a doctor was able to put a tourniquet on his leg until paramedics arrived, which probably you know, kept him from bleeding out. This video, this is a video that Jeremy actually made of him actually plowing, uh, plowing the snow right before the accident. And he put a little, con uh, little text up there. I think he put it on Instagram. It says, who is excited for the holidays? And uh, it's, it's just him, you know, driving the snowcat around. It looks like, you know, nobody else around. He's just chilling. Uh, it says, pave new paths holiday adventures <laughs> uh, yeah it looks like it's just him in there by himself driving that thing around i want to drive one of those that shit looks dope nearly done with sledding hill for the kids so he's building a sledding hill there you go so that's uh we're told the area was treated like an active crime scene with police arriving at 8 p.m to impound the snowcat which Jeremy's previously posted video of himself using on his property for snowstorms. The issue, we're told, is the machine has extensive safety features and should not have rolled over Jeremy. Oh, look at him. There he is in his, like, snow dome or little snow area. But, uh, yeah, as we reported, Jeremy's in critical stable condition. Injuries that they're experiencing weather-related accident with snowplow. So this is the dispatch audio obtained by TMZ. First responders initially concerned about the conditions to access. TMZ don't play, boy. They got it all. Let's see what they got. They're none about no Lamar Odom. Nope. 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 Okay. much not very interesting there but a source close to jeremy tells us his injuries are extensive along with his leg other parts of his body have been injured as well um yeah that sucks man because he could end up getting amputated and you know, whatever you know what i'm saying it could be jamela quinn what up peace soup and um yeah um so sada and Stu. Uh, we were talking about Cook and I, uh, everybody's sort of New Year's resolutions, but that's kind of boring. We don't want to call them New Year's resolutions. What, Sada, are you bringing to 2023? What's some stuff you're leaving in 2022 that you're not going to bring this next year? And, and, and what do you, what's your goals? Mm, um, I guess 
As far as my channel, uh, I guess my goal would be to hit like between seven to 800 subscribers by the end of the year. Um, anything more than that is gotcha. great. Um, You'll do it. We got you. Um, and then yeah, we got I'm you. hoping yeah, we got as far you. as like, oh, really? <laughs> as far as my mm -hmm. life, um, I guess like career advancement, I would love that. Um, mm -hmm. I have my own personal goals for that. Um, as far as what I'm leaving behind, I'm leaving behind um, just unnecessary baggage, um, unnecessary people who don't so serve me well um, mm -hmm. or not serve me well. That's, that's a bad way to put it, but um, I know they're just mean. not really good people or whatever. Um, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. just... Yeah, I'm just going into this new year, you know, being positive and just having, you know, not really taking things super seriously, just kind of going through it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take it as it comes. Right, right. Yeah. Very positive. Very positive. I dig it. Stu Dog, what about you, man? What, what What's your goals, man? What are you leaving behind? Uh, leave a, I'm leaving everything behind, man. Leave I, don't, the I don't bring nothing. I don't bring nothing into the new year, bro. I, I leave it all. Whatever I had last year, that's it. I'm gone. Uh -huh. I'm on to the next day. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, uh, if I could quote uh, Mark Twain, I'm trying to think of say it right. He said, uh, he said once he once said, now is is the accepted time to make your regular annual good resolutions. Next week, you can begin paving hell. For them as usual and that's true so for me mm. new year's is, is just a time where <clears throat> you know i uh i reflect on the past years or whatever but i just want to i just want to i just i just like to stay myself man. I, don't, I don't like to let anything change me uh mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. don't let anything make me different i just want to you know i want to i want to go out the same way i came in man so but as far as goals that's right. Uh, I got a lot. I got a, shh, a lot. I got to do, man. I got getting ready for retirement from my 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 active career, and then look forward to something else until I, you know, hit my my sixties. Uh, I know a lot of people don't think about that, but if you don't, uh, it will <laughs> it will be thinking about you. Mm -hmm. so, That's right. It ain't gonna so forget you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. And like Sada said, man, help you know, grow six element, man. Take it, try to take it to the moon. It's more, it gets more subs, man. And you know, keep you guys out there entertained. That's all watching, man. You know, mm -hmm. cause we feel like y'all like family, man. You know what I mean? So you know, whatever content we can bring to y'all, we're Absolutely. gonna bring it. And this year, we're gonna. And this year, I hope that um that Marvel and uh, Star Wars gives us something better. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because last it. year we had the Marvel, the 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 Sheamatic universe, uh, mm -hmm. and then we had the and we had the she the she wars universe, um, yeah. and that's not nothing against females or anything like that. It's just that mm -hmm. um, I'm not gonna be part of this work this woke war. Or they they went just killing me. Yeah, they, they, they did. Far. Yeah, when you look and at they realized it, it. Under, look how far Rob went, JPEG. Man. I know. Yeah. And Tango they, 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 Yeah, he did his yeah. dirty. With Thor, love and <laughs> thunder. Oh, with Thor, he really did his dirty. With, oh. He did his dirty with Thor because when you when you think about it, he made he made a mockery of Thor, man. Yeah, and he, he made he made Jane Foster the main character who was called the Mighty Thor, and Thor was just Thor. And he was mm -hmm. a parody of himself. You know what I mean? Yeah, and people was. were watching it. I read an article the other day where a guy was why he said he was watching it. And he was like, "Is this supposed to be a comedy? Like, what is this?" Because yeah. when you look at the first, when you look at Ragnarok, it was nothing like that. Um, no, it had its funny moments, but it wasn't just goofball twenty, you know, no. the whole fucking way through. But yeah. they know what they did wrong, and 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 Bob and, and Bob Chapek is is backpedaling, you know, as for not backpedaling, but they're 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 trying to recognize what they've done, and and you know, at least you know, admit it or whatever, acknowledge it, and and do something about. You know, stepping away from the politics. That's basically what you know they want to do. Is we have to, man. We have to out of the country. Yeah, because think about it. 
How many stories did Marvel have that they could have did that millions of people loved, that made them millions of dollars before it went to the screen, and you chose a story that was discontinued, and it only made you thousands of dollars, and you threw that yeah. to the forefront? And like, they that did makes that no because, sense. Yeah, no, right. they just wanted like, to. No they, sense, wanted, right? they wanted to please this, you know, uh, kill the patriarch uh, movement and all of that. And, 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 like, you know, that's cool, but that's cool in a lot of areas, but Marvel and Star Wars particularly were always big on having strong female characters, strong female representation. So it just wasn't needed. So what you did is you piled extra on top and it and ruined it. I mean, you know, come on, nothing against Daisy Ridley, but the character of Rey was absurd. I mean, no Jedi in the history of Jedi's could ever do what she did, but she did it with zero training instantly. It was just, it's, I mean, I could go on for days about how ridiculous yeah. that whole we had oh. Ray, we had Revan, we had uh, yeah, uh, and then Reva. Uh, Ray and Revan were probably uh, Reva. I mean, mm -hmm. it just the list goes on and on. I mean, I don't mind having a, a female character in the lead. I love having it believable. Strong make it make warrior. it believable, right? Yeah. Make it believable, man. It's, it's it nothing like seeing to... a man get punched in the face by a female. He can't do nothing Mary about too. it. I love that type stuff. That's yeah. what I like. You know what I <laughs> mean? But but I don't but, like when you <laughs> I don't like when you try to play down. The opposite sex to make the other sex that that makes no sense. It's that yeah, you don't have realistic. to emasculate men to make women strong. Right, to make women strong. Right, no, nah, not at all. Nah, and not in fact, I felt like it was a diss to women when they did things like making Taskmaster a female, basically saying that you know she couldn't handle a male villain. She we got to give her a female villain, and that's like I felt like it would have been cooler if she whooped the dude's ass, but. Yeah, I know. I guess they yeah. didn't, see, you know, so it, it backfired. Man, and then the thing with Gina, you go Carano, back to the eighties and we had that we had Star the Red Sonya movie. Yeah. Red Sonya kick, she was kicking male Red ass Sonya and taking great. names. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's kicking ass and taking names. I mean, Even Princess Leia was a was a badass. Princess Leia was a badass. Bill, mm -hmm. The legend of Billie Jean, she was kicking ass. And taking there you go, names. Superwoman. Yeah, yeah but um. But, uh, but, 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 oh, so I want to say this real quick. Marvel announces Stan Lee, a Stan Lee documentary coming to Disney mm -hmm. Plus to commemorate his 100th birthday that he would have had. Man. Yeah, Stan Lee is, is obviously, uh, best known for creating Marvel comics and, and his impact on films, TV shows, you know, has, has exponentially exploded in the last, you know, decade or two. But, and and Marvel Studios has dominated Hollywood, you know, with the slate of films and TV series based on all the characters that created by this man, Stan Lee. So it's only natural that we're getting a documentary in time for what would have been his 100th birthday. I can't wait to see it uh, to celebrate this this momentous uh, would be birthday. Marvel Entertainment has announced it, uh, a new documentary, Stan Lee, an original documentary is the title, celebrates the legacy of Lee, and it will showcase the characters that he created for Marvel. And um, the tagline is 100 years of dreaming, 100 years of creating, 100 years of Stan Lee. And the documentary will reportedly include some of the, you know, live uh, some of the movie cameos that he did, um, which, you know, he was in every movie, uh, popped in and did his little cameo thing. The writer has appeared in numerous uh, MCU movies as well. Um, but often in a, you know, in a, in a jokey fashion, you know, playing a goofy character. But one of the movies to include Lee was uh, Iron Man, where Tony Stark mistakes Lee for Hugh Hefner. And that was great. But the, and the announcement comes uh, on what would have been his 100th birthday. The creator of Marvel Comics is actually born on December 28th, 1922 in New York City. Uh, roaring 20s, man. And he passed away in 2018 at the age of 95. So uh, members of the Marvel family, along with fans, uh, took to social media to, to celebrate the life of, of, of Stan Lee. Director James Gunn took... Uh, also posted a personal tribute to Lee saying, happy 100th birthday to Stan Lee. You are missed, my friend. And uh, earlier this month, um, 
artist Umberto Ramos created an artwork showcasing Lee among the characters that he created for Marvel. Um, and among the, the characters featured in the artwork, you know, you've got Spider-Man, Daredevil, Hulk, Fantastic Four, X-Men, the Avengers. Um, and I think I, I think I have a picture of it. Yeah, it's really cool. Let me see. Let me see. Let me get this over here. Bink, bink, bink. Yeah, this is a great, great piece. I really love it. Would love to have this poster on the wall. This would make a fantastic poster right here. Bam. Ooh, oh, funny. yeah, yeah, that would. That's hard. I like that. Yeah, I mean, you got everybody up there. What, Dr. Doom in the top left? You got Doc Ock, <laughs> um, Fantastic Kingpin. Four. Yep. Maybe we'll recreate that live one day with the live, like, a edit mm -hmm. fan mm -hmm. art or whatever. Do that live yeah, like cosplayers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here's Daredevil at the bottom corner looking up all goofy. They're all it, it, they're all looking like um they're all like 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 you know like 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 our father. Like if you look at how they're looking, they're all looking up at him all, like all like look at Medusa. She's just they're just in awe. Yeah, they're in awe with him, yeah. Yeah, Daredevil. Like it should like, be the other way around, but damn, he's God. Yeah, he's uh, he's God though. He's their God. There's Dormammu in the back there. Yep. You got Ant Man Dormammu. on the shoulder. <laughs> yep. Stanley's definitely missed. Uh, Slade says, Sada, Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's, Slade. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but yeah, man, that, that'll be on Disney Plus. So that'll be pretty cool. Um, it, it'll be out this year at some point. Uh, we don't have a date yet, but. We do have like a little, a little mini trailer here, um, but it's on Twitter, so I'm gonna have to share screen with you so you can see it. Let's see, did you D? Click, click, click. Back over here. There we go. All right, so there it is. Let's see, can I? Let's see, can y'all hear it? Turn the volume up real good. Um, not much to the trailer there. I guess that's just sort of like a little montage of some of his, what do you call them, uh, cameos and shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, that's going to be cool, man. That's uh, really cool. Uh, and speaking of James Gunn, on the Guardians uh, ship, um, Doom Patrol and Dark Knight Returns, he's he uh, uh, talks with... Um, well, replies, you know, talking with people on Twitter and stuff like that. Um, and Mastodon, um, DC Studios CEO himself, James Gunn, revealed a bevy of details about Marvel, DC, and, and the comics that he's been reading personally. Um, but they asked him about, like, if he's been, if he's seen and liked any of HBO Max's Doom Patrol series. Um, and he replied saying yes. Um, similarly, Gunn confirmed that he's read uh, Frank Miller's seminal Batman story, The Dark Knight Returns, recently, um, and uh, he gave praise to um, Tom King, which is you know one of the best uh, comic writers out there. And when a fan asked if he enjoyed uh, Tom King's Supergirl, Wonder uh, Woman of Tomorrow, he said he enjoyed it so 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 much, and that he feels Tom King is just the greatest. Uh, and just before the new year, fans supported to speculate about whether books on the table in the tweet below uh, were hints, you know, about the future of his DC universe, you know, as they, you know, as their omnibuses of Grant Morrison's Batman run. Um, so that could be, you know, but Gunn set the record straight, confirming that their placement wasn't any kind of hint, though uh, he admitted that Grant's Batman and Robin and their Superman are some of his favorite uh, joints, but. Uh, and then one fan, you know, showed praise that Grant Morrison had given 
to the uh to 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 guns um john cena uh led pa- uh, peacemaker series um and, and he said i haven't seen that uh, obviously joking but uh when when asked about if fans would learn about what happened to the benatar which is the ship used by guardians of the galaxy and guardians 2 uh he said it's more simple than that rocket just keeps upgrading ships so take that for what but in a thread with uh gun um one of the twitter users stated that disney must have influenced guardians of the galaxy 3 uh and and he once again clarified that studios only interfere if they don't like a movie and confirmed that his works have never been interfered with stating i've never been forced into a change on any of my movies including the guardians films so we can you know that 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 just tells us that you know when when Gunn's doing something he's got creative control and we can blame him if it sucks. So um, he also debunked a rumor that said Warner Brothers Discovery would be hosting an event on January sixth to make announcements about upcoming projects. So definitely uh, <laughs> keep an eye on that. We'll be talking about it. Um, but they asked him if that was true, and he says no, it's not true. So <laughs> when are we um, getting this damn? <laughs> that's what i want let's put on a new year's resolution dc get yourself together let's get some great movies this year how about that yes. <laughs> let's get a cohesive yes. universe you know, at least on paper <laughs> right i'm telling you man um the dcu release will be shazam fury of the gods which releases on march 17th this year and it'll be followed by the flash it's actually gonna happen uh uh starring the troubled ezra miller Blue Beetle and Aquaman and The Last Kingdom are, are I guess that's going to sort of round out the end of old DC, you know, the DCEU. And from then on, it'll be Guns DCU. And that'll be it. So hopefully, you know, yeah, Momoa will become Lobo and Ezra Miller will get the boot. We'll get a new Barry Allen. And uh, unfortunately, they're doing Cavill's out because they're doing a younger Superman story, which I think we talked about it Saturday. I'm not really interested in seeing a younger Superman story again. That's like we've seen that a bunch I, of I'm times. Just, yeah, I'm, I'm not really interested in seeing that from James Gunn. Um, right. I want to see his writing with Superman. Yeah, it no. doesn't. He doesn't really. F- I, I can't. I don't see any of his work. And, re- and, and it doesn't Superman. fit. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's I, Lobo. <laughs> fuck yeah! Like I'm, I can't wait to see James Gunn's Lobo. That's gonna be great. But Superman doesn't really fit him. But again, like Clark Kent, you know Clark, uh, young Clark. We've seen that in like numerous TV shows. But it's like, what's Superman doing next? Like, let's move on. Let's see older Superman. Let's see Superman, you know, out in space, fucking with Dark Side, or or doing, you know, moving on. You know, where does he go next? Not another young superman story like come on bro it's like saturated it's been done a bazillion times but i would love to speak to our resident superman super fan uh spade spade anomics comics and see mm-hmm. if if a superman super fan is interested in a young superman story is that what what a, what a real superman yes he fan is i see? think he is i think he's 100 percent interested a lot of people are you know i mean I, me personally, I'm gonna tell you. I mean, if, Sada, you can stamp it. Time. You can stamp it on the second day of January. I huh. think they're gonna give us that. I think they're gonna give us the little young Superman. They're gonna do their thing, and I think Cavill's gonna be back for another Superman franchise or whatever they're gonna do. They don't. It's coming. He's not out. Cavill? He just ain't in it right now. Stamp it. He, yeah, I think he's out, but he just ain't in it right now. Yeah, he just ain't in it right now. I don't think he's, he's out. out for good. I think he's just he's out. out for now. For now, if he, if he he's comes, out for good. <laughs> he's out for good. If he ever comes back, it'll be cameo shit. If uh, I don't even know why he would come back after the way that all went down. But, I mean, if I was him, I would. Well, well, James yeah, Gunn yeah, said, right. James <laughs> Gunn on his Twitter feed, James Gunn said on his Twitter feed that had he known that we the fans was that attached to Henry Cavill as Superman, he'd have went in a different direction with it. I mean, and damn, that he didn't mind going in a different direction. <laughs> I mean, how could he not know? Though? Been vocal. They've been vocal for almost no, he knew a we, decade, see, sir. <laughs> yeah, he that, knew we that's, liked that's him. Bullshit. He knew we liked Cavill. He just said he didn't know we liked him that much. Like oh, he didn't my. know that it would be such an uproar with him. Yeah, not whatever. Being, 
<laughs> I don't buy it. Backlash was hitting him a little different. Hey, man, he said, Wait, what? hey man, listen, it's, it's on his Twitter feed. That's what he said. That's what he said. Oh, no, no. That's what he said. But I don't buy it. But I don't, I don't buy it. Don't buy it. <laughs> you, know, you, don't, you don't think he, you don't, you don't. Don't think he was genuine with it? No. I, I, don't, I feel like part of it wasn't genuine. I feel like there's no way you come into this shambling mess that is the DCU and you don't understand that. Two things people were fighting for, either the Snyderverse or Cavill being superman that's that's, that's kind of like you that's know all they wanted yeah that's so man. there's no way you're coming into that. that and you don't know like how yeah, much people that. loved or liked henry cavill as superman there's just no way <laughs> no there's been huge campaigns and i mean huge huge but yeah. i I, yeah, give but you you, I know Stu, that you're gonna love uh to end the year that girl that girl <laughs> Let's be great. She was such a great bad girl. She uh, posted a video on her Instagram offering a little highlight reel of her, yes, uh, 2022, oh. and it, it showed a lot of little set, you know, little set scenes like from the from you know on the set and shit. And um, I have a few of them for you, but uh, let me see. Can I pull them down? And I can even show you the um, the little video too. But these are some of the images that she put on her Instagram. Any second now? Okay, there we go. Well, I think we've all seen that one, but here's like I guess that's her and maybe her son um, on the set. There she is, just throwing some peace signs. Here she is. Yeah, that was lunch. how she would have looked at the end of the film. They were saying. Mm. Which, better, I these are two different suits. Oh, so yeah, I so her. I think they were saying the second one is how she would have looked at the end of the film, and then the this first one. one is how it would yeah. have been throughout the film. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think this looks like yeah. something she could have made, and then this looks like something. Yeah, this is based on that. Uh, that's based on the what's it called? What is that new Fifty Two run? But oh, it's based on that one, and that's like her Arthur homemade Lee. suit or whatever. Mm -hmm. New Fifty Two. Okay. Well, let me see. Can I get the? Uh, let's see. There you go. So that's her, and there we go. Let's see if it'll play. Oh yeah. I will say, you have to really watch close to catch the uh set photos Stu, because she's got a lot of photos mixed in here and they're not all set photos so just keep an eye there's one there's one there's them there's one oh there's so one. Bad, anything to get me close to seeing the Batgirl movie there you go <laughs> You got you're gonna find that cut too. <laughs> I know you would like this. Listen, Sada, it's going down. It's going down. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, Sada, somebody is going to release they <laughs> going to leak that. That's getting leaked. I'm gonna be right there when it happens. <laughs> Yeah, the suit for the end of the film, it didn't look terrible. I would have needed to stand it up. Stand it up. Like, I like how she, she's got the black paint on her eyes. Like, uh, mm -hmm. what's his name? But she doesn't have that in every scene. So that must have been a certain part, like, look like at the end, maybe. Or a final battle where she went dark or some shit. She's Latina. Or South American. Oh, somebody definitely leaking that if she's South American. Somebody definitely leaking that. Oh, this is longer than I thought. I didn't know it was this long. Uh, this is like her whole 2022 montage. She should have threw the Batgirl film on the end of it. I know. <laughs> no. She should have had the whole Here's the link. film. <laughs> yeah. She just went right into it. She should have done just a montage just of Batgirl stuff. That would have been cool. But to her, that's just a part of her life. That was just a part of her year. She had a good year. She drank yeah, a lot of coffee. Heart. She drank a lot of <laughs> coffee, I can tell you that. 
Ate a lot of sandwiches. Coffee. Look at that. A lot of mochaccinos or whatever you call them. Just drank a lot of coffee. Yeah. A lot of mochaccinos. A lot of capers. Some Ain't there a volume thing? I don't want to hear this song though, um, Leslie. <laughs> I don't know the phone to like, mute it and then the video would still play. I don't know if that's the same thing on the computer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mute it, but then it mutes the whole TV, so I don't hear you guys either. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> there we go. So there you go, Stu, man. Get you a little closer to your, your <laughs> baby. Look at that. Somebody don't look at me. Don't tell me. It's going down, bro. Going down. It's going we'll like, revisit this in uh, a couple months. <laughs> See if they still right, get right. by that. I really think so. I, I think in 2023, we'll get to see Bad Girl. Well, speaking of, uh, I mean, what we do know uh, is. Loki season two, the release window, the cast, the plot, and everything that we know so far, uh, and all about Loki, Luffyson, the Asgardian god of mischief based on the Norse deity, is perhaps the most uh, beloved anti-hero character in the MCU, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, obviously, you know, Loki initially made you know his appearance as the villain in the 2011 Thor film. And sort of just adopted. I just became a really beloved character, and and people just you know really responded to him, and they just started uh, pushing him and, and giving him his own stuff, and he started having his own everything. And despite being introduced as an enemy, you know he involved he, he evolved into uh, a beloved character, you know an antihero that uh, you know fans love. And in 2021, Loki finally got the series focused entirely on his own mischief and and right. You know, set right after the Battle of uh, New York uh, from the the Avengers movies, almost ten years after its initial uh, his initial um, you know debut, and uh, the first season was great. We 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 loved it. It was uh, it amassed a huge following, and then the popularity of the series um, uh, with Tom Hiddleston uh, was more than I think reason enough to keep it going. And this it was a six episode series, right? It ended uh, sort of on a cliffhanger that foreshadowed the upcoming season and formally introduced the idea of the multiverse to, you know, to, to the cinematic fans, to the casual audience and uh, mixing, you know, fantasy and mythology and space and time and sci-fi and comics. And the second season is coming up. Uh, It'll be part of phase five of the MCU and it's expected to be a much more creepy and you know horror, horror terrifying uh than the than the last uh season so that's going to be cool and um like pretty much um the head writer uh, of the first season michael waldman he signed an overall <laughs> contract with disney in, in january 2021 and that included his involvement in the second season so a mid credit sequence uh from the first season finale uh, from in July 2021, announced the second season right after the first one ended. It said it's going to happen. So Loki season two will debut this summer, uh, summer of 2023. And according to Kevin Feige, um, who made the announcement during the San Diego Comic Con last year, this year 2022, sorry, um, the new season will be a part of MCU's Phase Five, which will begin on February 17th, and with the release of Ant Man. And the Wasp Quantumania, which is going to be lit. Uh, we're going to get lots of Kang action. Um, lots of the Quantum Realm action. It's going to be mad, mad cool. And they're actually making this one to be a more... Um, not serious movie. It's still Ant-Man, but a much more serious movie than the previous Ant-Man. Mm. Um, and despite the, the fact that, you know... We don't yet know the exact release date. The estimated release window for Loki uh, season two is midway through 2023. So in the meantime, you can watch the first season of Loki on Disney Plus, you know, and, and catch yourself back up if you haven't uh, watched it. Um, but the um, season two was among the the different shows that they talked about during D uh, D23 Expo. Um, from September 9th to September 11th, 2022. 
And Marvel shared a bit of information on the show with Kevin Feige revealing that Loki is still trying to make sense of everything following the, the you know, his shocking uh, shit that happened in season one, right? Where he just got time warped. And so although the teaser for Loki 2 hasn't been um, released by Marvel, uh, they did show off a first look teaser trailer at D23. Um, but it has not yet been revealed to the public. We don't have, uh, you know, it's not on YouTube yet, but we hopefully won't have to wait long to to catch a preview of the new season. Um, and more recently, Disney Plus revealed a few seconds of footage from the season um, in their trailer for 2023, um, which I think we've all seen a bunch of times. Um, you know, the one where they show, like, all the different secret invasion stuff peter pan mandalorian just like a little yeah. they show two seconds but <clears throat> that's all we got but but yeah it, it, it promises to be uh quite dope um uh, but i know something else dude that i know you're gonna be into and it kind of goes with um one of my new joints that i got this uh christmas man sound wave right here that's the homie right man there. Right there. My favorite transformer. The boom box. He turns into a boom box. He's the most hip hop transformer, period. Uh you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I love this one. This is uh this is really cool. Um sculpt. It's a great design of him. Looks a lot like the 80s uh sound wave. Bummer though, it doesn't turn into a boom box. Like, what's that about? What, what are we doing, Hasbro? Like, I don't get it, or uh, not Hasbro, but uh, well, I have those. I have, I got a, uh, I got a couple of those too. You know, I got a, I have Megatron and Optimus. They just, yeah, the leg where the leg just don't, yeah. yeah, yeah, they just don't change. They just stay in robot turn. form. Oh and no, he changes. It changes into change? a, a cha yeah, he changes into a spaceship, but it's it's sound wave. It's oh, that's the one robot. from the. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the one the everybody. Don't, yeah, that's the one everybody hates. The legacy one, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, like, yeah, he's supposed to be a boombox. Yeah, word. everybody hates that. I thought you were talking about the ones with the uh, that don't transform, like these right here. No. They make Hang another on. one. <laughs> There's another legacy transformer that of Soundwave where the tape deck you see, he's got the tape deck right there. Where that one I've seen, I want that one. Yeah. This one I love. They, there is one that everybody hates where the tape deck is really a thin little tiny window sliver. It's not like a real big square. It looks like shit and his whole sculpt, everything about him just looks completely different. He just doesn't look anything really like Soundwave. And, uh, so I didn't want that one. But And then I grabbed this guy here. My man Wolverine with the, the glowing hot claws you see his claws are like all super overheated turning red and white and shit and uh he came with this little head or the uh you know they always give you two heads at marvel so i usually do wolverine in the mask but this is the best head sculpt that i've ever seen on a wolverine marvel legends so i had yeah, to throw yeah, that that's good. That's good. <laughs> marvel legends the, the ones i've seen lately they've been stepping the game up this they is the have. Transformers one I have. Yeah. I have uh, Starscream. Ooh, nice. Megatron, oh, nice. Optimus. Megatron. These are the uh, Transformers. Red. Oh, the red. They're fully posable. Yeah, they're fully posable, but, but they, don't they just transform. don't transform. Ooh, yeah, they right. don't transform. And they come with the extra attachments. So but, but aren't, and John they, Cube. aren't they supposed to be designed to look like the 80s cartoons? Or are they yeah, they're, they're exactly they're exactly, exactly. Like the 80s okay, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's why what, I bought it. That is, yeah, yeah, that's why I want. Yeah, I want one of like, those. Yeah, it's Optimus. Optimus. Hell yeah, I want Megatron yeah. and Optimus too. You move it a little bit to the right. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah, dope. Yeah. yeah, I need those. Nice. Yeah, I need back, those. yeah. Fresh. On the back, see Optimus has his battle axe. Remember when mm -hmm. him and Megatron fought yep. on the waterfall? He had the yep. battle axe. Yeah. Well, the Megatron comes with the uh, he comes with the mace. And then uh -huh. cube, and he comes with the battle wax. He comes with the uh, Matrix and leadership, and his mm -hmm. signature gun, his okay. signature rifle from the cartoon. Yeah, not, not the yeah. stuff we got in the movies. No, the no, no, straight from the cartoon. That's yeah. dope. Yeah, I gotta get them reds. There, I saw some red um, transformers, but I didn't know what it was. I thought it was just some new, you know, some new iteration. But I didn't know they were throwbacks to the '80s joints. I definitely gotta highlight that. Don't forget about the blaster. Blaster, yeah, I seen the blaster. 
Yeah, Blaster's mm-hmm. dope. Hell yeah. I haven't been able to get Blaster, but I've been looking for a good Blaster. I've been looking for a Blaster Red or a dope Blaster for a long time. But so Blaster was my man. Too. But I got him too. Um, this is a different saber tooth than the other nice. one that I got. I'll blow it up for you. I think this is um, you know, the uh what do you call it? Apo- Age of Apocalypse um version. Uh, if if I'm not mistaken. Um and then this one, so I already had a Baroness, but she had short hair. She didn't look like Baroness from the comics or from the cartoon. And I really wanted one. And her the cobra symbol was down here on her on her pelvis. Like Ooh, I guess, that cobra symbol is nice. But this one, yeah, the cobra symbol is real prominent right there on her chest. She's got the shiny black. That's armor. the Baroness. That's the Baroness we love. Yeah, that's the you see that long hair, so that's that's Baroness from the cartoon, and I was really hyped to get her because when I was a kid, Baroness, I had like every GI Joe. She's one of the little the GI Joes that I did not have. My older cousin had Baroness. I could never get a Baroness because they had stopped selling her by that time. But this one, she was one of the is, first uh, ones we had. She was one of the first one of the, ones we had. She's like from the second. Uh, yeah, she's like from the second uh, era. It was like the first fourteen. And she was in that very next joint. And then this guy, I fucking love, Dark Flash, is a gorgeous sculpt. And um, he, I love the colors, black and gold. And the, the zombie, the zombie look he's got. Great, great, great sculpt. Where's he at? And he's got the. And then he's got these really cool flame effects. You know, you can pop on his ankles there. That fla- that is Flash from uh, Dark Flash. Not, yeah, it's not. It's Dark Flash, but it's not really Flash. It's um. Yeah, it's, no. I don't know because on the on the uh, from Blackest on the Night TV or, show, uh, right? Yes, yeah, Blackest Multiverse. Night. Yeah, yeah Blackest Multiverse. Night. Yeah, that's and then that's also the one that chases you when you die. Um, mm-hmm. remember Zoom died in uh, Assault on Arkham, and then when they came mm-hmm. to get him, he started running. He was running from that flash right there because they were coming to get him. Remember, uh, Batman sh- uh, snuck up on him and shot him in the head, and he didn't even see yeah. it coming. Yeah, so he just mm-hmm. kept moving in order to avoid it, in order to avoid death, the uh, beaten death. Uh huh. Yeah, he. Yeah, and one thing right now about the um, DC multiverse figures, they're super on sale, bro. Like super. Yes, they super. are. Like, yes, they are. I've been racking. Up. I've been racking up. Racking yeah. up, you know, just like they got some for fun. this right here. Come here. The uh Asriel Batman armor, five bucks. The gold, five bucks is selling Ooh. for right. Now. Like five. Where'd nine. you get that? Now where'd you get that one at? Guess. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> the, the best store in yeah, Reno's you area. Best. Bro, you live next to the bro, best, you live next to the in, best the in America, bro. In the country, bro. Country, I be I couldn't live. I couldn't live in man. your town. I couldn't live in your town because I'd be at Walmart every day, bro. I'm saying, bro, <laughs> I'd be a wreck, man. They be killing me in there, man. But I just live in a really small town with one Walmart, one McDonald's, one Wendy's, one Burger. It's like one a one one street town. Like all the businesses in this town are on one strip. That's maybe a mile long, and then neighborhoods all around. It's like some projects over here, and <laughs> some projects over here, a bunch of neighborhoods over here, and then then all the white people live on the other side of the track, and they got the big plantation style homes. It's like for real in the South, dirty rural, uh, rural, rural area, man. So I'm one, probably one of the only you know collectors of marvel stuff in the area so when i go in walmart it's kind of like i just got my pick of the shit because really nobody else is buying the shit here (laughs) i say that but i actually know for a fact there's one guy lives in town that uh not only has a youtube channel sells funko pops on instagram and like it's all into the whole shit and i was like blown away because again this town is super small so i was at the post office sending off some comics that i had sold you know you you know probably a year ago and this dude was in there sending off a bunch of packages that were like funko pop size and i forget which one of us said something to the other one first 
but we just realized that we were both kind of doing the same thing. And uh, so I suspect that there are, uh, you know, maybe a couple of other guys like him that, that do, do buy stuff. Because when I go in there, you know, a lot of stuff is being bought. And I know it's not little kids. Kids don't play with this stuff. Kids are not buying $30 action figures, okay? And, 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 and they're not playing with action figures. Kids are playing with their phones and computers and whatever the fuck. We're the ones buying these action figures, grown-ass men. It's pitiful. Like the 40-year-old virgin over here. But um, Transformers Rise of the Beast is where I was going with that. Mm. Um, that's yes. going to be a banger. Already. <laughs> controversy a banger. already. Oh, wait, what? Yeah, controversy yeah. already. It's controversy already. Controversy. Says, yeah. Already, already. Yeah, yeah, there's already. Big, big changes. Um, Dang. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when, when, the, when, when, when the Transformers show hit uh you know tv back in 80 1984 toys and cartoons uh were 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 changed forever because it basically was one of the original cartoons that's really just a commercial to sell toys um as you know now kids could could bring their own could bring their own battles you know from the show like that they saw to life with with uh, the toy robots you know that would become cars or planes or boats or whatever. And it was crazy, you know, as, as, as kids back then. And for over a decade, um, you know, the battle between the Autobots and Decepticons was, was the only battle that continued on and, and the lore grew, you know, from that point, you know, in, in a lot of different forms of media, you know, comics and, and cartoons and films, whatever. But in the late 90s, uh, everything changed when a new series was introduced titled Beast Wars, where now animals could become robots, uh, you know, in this brand new battle. And following the release of the show, Beast Wars became just as beloved as the original series, but never really got the same recognition. Right. Stu? I mean, it, it it was loved, but it was never it never really got that same popularity. You know, Um but the uh, I think the time has finally come for the Maximals to get their time in the in the spotlight alongside the G1 Transformers. You know, um, that said, there's already been some changes, you know, to the character designs reg uh, regarding realism and, and most importantly, size. But the change in size for the Maximals uh, may have only benefited these characters um more than ever um now and and the continuity of beast wars you know what i'm saying came a long way from the initial battles on cybertron um set in the years after after the war between the autobots and decepticons the cybertronians evolved and developed into two new factions with the maximals and the predacons the predacons yeah and like um like the one that came before him <laughs> megatron sought conquest you know to and, and to rule over the others and and started a war that the maximals led by optimus primal uh opposed and you know their war took them off of the planet and through a wormhole where both sides crash landed on a prehistoric earth so to survive the energon enriched environment uh the factions took the forms of the native animals as protection and thus began the Beast Wars. And what made this era of Transformers so unique, beside the animals, uh, was, the f was, was that even though these factions fought their own battle, the advanced technology was shown right away. Um, for example, uh, both factions were much smaller than the Autobots and Decepticons. Um, future yeah, the future, episode, yeah, the future ones, are, they were much smaller. I mean, yeah. like human size compared right. to... The, the Autobots and Decepticons. They mm -hmm. also, they also, um, well, actually, to back it up, Megatron that came from the future was actually shown the way to Earth. He had a golden disc that was given to him by Megatron mm -hmm. from the past, who gave right. it to Galvatron, who gave it to Megatron, and told him where to go and to crash land on that planet mm. so that they, he actually had a, he had an ultimate plan to have everything happen the way it did, but the Autobots not get revived. Only Decepticons got revived, but 
being is that they went back into the past, the wormhole that they used, Megatron used that to go into the past, to go back to Earth in order to fulfill uh, the the destiny that the past Megatron <clears throat> had bestowed upon him from Galvatron. Yeah. But um, it wound up going, you know, haywire because now the Autobots, once they found out about the Golden Disc, because Dinobots stole the Golden Disc, told the Maximals about it. And once they figured out that Megatron communicated with past Megatron, it became a big thing that they had to stop him and protect him because Megatron was, his ultimate goal was to kill all the Autobots in the past, even though right. he was from the future and he came to the past. Mm-hmm. But their 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 animal forms were used to um, protect them and shield them and blend in. From the, yeah. yeah, not really blend in, but because there was nobody really to blend in from. But they could only stay in robot form for so long mm-hmm. before they would absorb too much energy and they were going to stasis. Right. So right. yeah, their their animal forms right. when they transformed into robot because you got to remember when transformers are in their robot form that's their weakest form. Yeah, when they transform into a car or whatever. That's their strongest form. That that's mm-hmm. that, that's their strongest form. So their their forms were made to <laughs> shield them from from the energon. So they could transform yeah, briefly, yeah. but not for long. Not outside their yeah. ships. They couldn't do it for long. Because even yeah. in the cartoon, they found the nemesis. And uh Megatron, you know, once he found a nemesis, he was like, Holy crap. And they actually I think they repaired it and actually had it. You know, like up because the nemesis didn't crash in the ocean to begin with. When mm-hmm. you go back to the original cartoon, it was in the ocean, but it got, but they show you how it got there because originally it crashed not too far from the arc. And then the future Megatron found it and they show you how it got in the ocean yeah. to begin with. Yeah. And when the Decepticons found it. So. Well, the, 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 um, the, the crazy thing about the, 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 the Maximals and their size was, um it, and originally they were much smaller but they they in the future episodes they showed the body of optimus prime and in comparison to the maximals he towered over them and so this allowed their animal forms <clears throat> to make more sense and it created more height diversity in the series which continued and has continued to pay off but in in the movie rise of the beast the maximals in their animal form are much larger than the auto oh, much larger so like, yeah, yeah it'd be like a, a panther be like way bigger than a car and shit and but both teams you know could see eye to eye and, and battle on equal ground when they're in robot form so you know while the concept <clears throat> doesn't really make sense on paper the visual aspect of these characters with their biomechanical forms makes much more sense and it also explores you know deeper concepts and could be explained in a very clever way that expands the lore of the maximals on earth and why they've never been seen until now. Because <clears throat> that's the big thing. Why have we not seen this, you know, gigantic right. robot it's gorilla? Right, gorilla. Right. But, oh, wasp. Yeah. But yeah, yeah wasp and data, rhinox, giant, cheetor, uh, yeah. giant insects and shit. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Rampage. So, but, I forget about Rampage, Dinobot. He was yes. he was actually a philosopher. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, and considering that the Maximals were, you know, likely from the future and hiding for centuries their massive size would make sense but occasionally being seen by humans right they could also fuel the lore of cryptids on earth for example um optimus primal could have could have served as inspiration for king kong for the the writer and and like airs or could resemble a thunderbird right from like oh, native American folklore and like Air different Razor? folklore yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, like so, like, like based on her ability to breathe fire, um, basically. Yeah. Um, so essentially, the size of the Maximals, you know, will not show accurate. Works much better, um, and as it could, you know, open more doors for continuity and allow for amazing battles alongside the Auto- Autobots because nobody wants to see uh, Optimus Prime just, yeah. you know, stepping on bad robots. <laughs> but, well, I think they, when, I um, think, you know, they, they're going after, they're going more after the. Uh, the Netflix series, because in the Netflix series they weren't, they were mm. they weren't as, they weren't that much smaller than they were like the, the movie, right? They were just a little bit yeah. smaller than them, not much smaller than them. Mm. Um, but the Netflix series explained a lot, and mm. and then gave you you know and pieced it all together, 
You know what I mean? So when you guys get yeah. a chance, check out the Netflix series, uh, The yeah. War for Cybertron. That Siege. They had a Netflix. Yeah, Siege of Cybertron. Yeah, it's Transformers Siege. What did you say, Sada? No, I said I forgot that they had a Netflix series. Yeah. <laughs> I totally yeah, forgot. Yeah, that, that pieces it all together. CGI. Yeah. 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 Oh, is it related Skylinks. to this movie? Yeah, is, are, is it connected? I think, I, think, yeah. gonna... I think the movie took a lot from the Netflix series okay. because a oh, lot man. of the stuff that they're it's doing gross. it's just like the it's literally just like the Netflix series. It pieces it all together and puts yeah. them on the same timeline. It literally oh, just man. gets them all because like mm-hmm. they even show Skylinks, and I haven't seen <clears throat> Skylinks in years, bro. I don't know, like man. <laughs> okay. Um speaking of movies, Thunderbolts uh might introduce adamantium to the MCU, uh, which is oh yes, I saw that theory. Yeah, that would be pretty pretty cool because I was um, thinking of the mutants and and you know when are they going to formally be introduced in the MCU? <laughs> and if you check out, yeah, the you, movie, think we, you, you think we go? You think we're really going to get them this year, Reno? Really no, it, 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 <laughs> no way. <laughs> the most no, I know, I know, I know he's a talk. fan, like. I mean, Sometimes I know he's a big mutant fan. Like he's a, he's a real big. Yeah, mutant yeah. Fan. I really. Yeah. So it's twenty twenty four. Twenty twenty four at the soonest. At the soonest. Mm. Wow. I'm thinking twenty twenty five, but presumably in the upcoming fourth school, uh, Captain America: New World Order. Um, they would they would maybe introduce mutants <laughs> at this point. In that, it's not going to be like a mutant film. It'll be Captain America: New World Order. But in that movie, uh, the reports are that that's where they'll sort of. Acknowledge it, but other sources are are singing a different tune, saying that um, Admantium, common commonly associated with the X Men, won't arrive a bit later than Captain America in the Thunderbolts, which will come July uh, 26, twenty six, twenty twenty four, because um, well, according to you know, yeah, that's a long uh, way, story What movies are what, what what Marvel movies are we getting this year? Um, Guardians, uh, Ant Man, um, movie wise, MCU wise, I feel like there's a third one, but I'm not the sure. Marvels, yeah, the Marvels, yeah, um, yeah. and we'll get into that in a second too because I want to talk about now. The they also said that remember the, the Tony Stark, the Armor Wars, that's been upgraded from a TV show to a movie now, yes, I don't know when mm-hmm. that's coming out though, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah I don't know, when, I don't have a date on that. About that. But Thunderbolts will start off with the seven member Avengers like anti hero group traveling to the to the body of the dead celestial Tiamat and to get their hands on Adamantium. That's literally why they're going. And so the island will be will later be revealed to be named Genosha, which if you guys are uh, X Men fans, you know is just one of the many places that the mutants have called home in the comic books. Um, but what starts off as an off the books acquisition mission turns into, you know, uh, when, when, uh, worse, when, when Century, um, a long membered, a long rumored member of the team, uh, starts hearing voices and they'll have to stop the MCU's version of Superman, uh, which is Century. Um, so that'll be, you know, their big challenge but the thunderbolts was initially revealed as the final film of phase five to the mcu it's still unclear if that remains the case after blade was pushed back to september 6 2024 then again kevin feige could have been referring to the thunderbolts like what the mcu did with avengers endgame um although you know the second highest grossing film of all time is widely considered the culmination of the entire phase three and pretty much the MCU at that point. The last film of Phase 3 is Spider-Man Far From Home. But we don't think of it. But Blade, which oh, yeah. <laughs> which recently got a new director and writer, could explore the more supernatural side of the MCU, you know, with the, the werewolf by night kind of stuff, and while also keeping us updated about what's happening following the events of this Captain America, New World Order, and Thunderbolts, and... Um, Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios have changed plenty of things from the source material to fit in the cinematic universe's narrative. We know this, and it's possible that the inclusion of Genosha, if it happens, uh, so will be more of a, a red herring to throw audiences off their tracks before the actual introduction of mutants in the MCU. 
Yeah, I know that's gonna throw me off because why is Genosha being included? (laughs) Yeah, and it's really weird because it's strange. (laughs) They're just using the word. Yeah, Genosha. It's not even the same Genosha, so it's a weird (laughs) foreshadowing, like maybe a weird red herring. Are they saying like that the celestial was made from adamantium and like that's why they're going? To the, no. that's where they're gonna acquire it from. Is that what they're saying, or is, is this something different? Yeah, well, well, that there's adamantium in it somewhere. Oh, that's maybe so in cool. its maybe in its armor, maybe in its components, you know, because the celestials are you know technological beings as well. Right. But, you know, and we do got, know that we do know that there is antimanium on Earth, but there's not a lot of it. There's it's, it's hard it's not to find like vibranium. Right. Yeah, I guess they got to move on from right. vibranium. We're like, all right. They, yeah. they know that. They know that antimanium. Yeah. They know antimanium didn't originate on Earth. They know that. They know it's not yeah. from Earth, but they just know that what is on this planet is in very sh- short supply. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably the most you'll find at one spot is in Wolverine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And well, as, after Blade premieres in theaters, um. The two actual mutants uh, that come in will be Hugh Jackman and Ryan's Ryan Reynolds will will come in and do Deadpool three right after that. So it's coming, guys. The, the mutants are coming. It's just they got to trickle them in and make it seem you know make sense. In the meantime, we can look forward to Ant Man uh, on February seventeenth. That that's I think the next that's the very next thing that we can look forward. To. Um, but the Marvels, the Marvels. Which oh. I couldn't care less about. Um, but what's the yeah. plot? Is um, the uh, it, I think it, it's going to go Ant Man, Guardians three, then the Marvels. The Marvels. And yeah, it's going to be like sometime in July, I think. Yeah, sure. yeah. I think a lot of people are expecting our first news, at least in relation to the Marvels, to come well closer to the release of Ant Man and the Wasp, or somewhat after it. But Marvel Studios has decided to release the synopsis of the film now. And um, you see, uh, here's what the first official press release says. uh, And I quote, Carol Danvers, a.k.a. Captain Marvel, has reclaimed her identity from the tyrannical creed and patrevenge on the supreme intelligence, but unintentional consequences. Is that it? Um, that's it. C. Oh, Carol. Yeah, yeah. C. Carol. Uh, uh, C. Carol shouldering a burden of destabilized universe when her duties sent her to an anomalous wormhole linked to a Cree revolutionary. Her powers become entangled with that of Jersey City superfan Kamala Khan and AKA Miss Marvel and Carol's estranged niece, Captain Monica Rambeau. And that's quote. what I heard. Yeah. It's so, like a body stripping right. type of thing. Uh huh. Yeah. So, quite obviously, the supreme intelligence is again being brought to the forefront. And it's honestly, I, you know, I thought that what they did with the supreme intelligence was kind of underwhelming. Um, just making it somebody that Carol's like familiar with um, that was manipulating her. And obviously, there's something a little bit more sinister may go back to some of good old concept art um, and bring those ideas back. But obviously the synopsis confirms to us uh, a few details. Um, Despite what you may have might have heard, they're not going to ignore Ms. Marvel. She's obviously very crucial to the plot here. Uh, And this literally tells us that she's connected with Ms. Marvel in this weird way. Obviously, we saw what happens with her at the end of Miss Marvel because Carol gets transported there. We see Kamala. She gets transported wherever Carol was. More than likely, something to do with what they talk about here is this Cree revolutionary and this wormhole. So it sounds like what uh, that we could pick up with Kamala already in trouble in space. And Carol is quickly just going to recruit a team of people on Earth, possibly even her parents, and bring them along on the adventure which honestly goes back kind of uh, to kind of to some details uh, or ideas that the comics, you know, had played with. But overall, it's pretty it's a pretty good plot synopsis for if you're gonna if you have to do this movie. Uh, but it's a little bit more, I would say, um, complex than the first film. 
uh, which I do appreciate because damn, that was boring. Uh, even though, remember, yeah, a lot of people say that. Yeah, a lot of yeah. people say the first film was boring. It, 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 it yeah. was, in my opinion. Yeah, like watching yeah a lot of people find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of people say it was a snore fest. Well, yeah, it, was. it wasn't. Yeah, I don't remember. I really don't even remember, like, I don't remember shit about it. <laughs> like, it was very <laughs> uh, memorable. There's not um, much yeah. to remember. I just don't care about anyone. The only one I care about is Photon. And I don't want to see her with them, so I don't really care to see the Marvels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, on the same level as Thunderbolts for me. I just, like, I could do yeah. with that. Well, I think this one, this this next Marvels, um, just by virtue of everything that they have going on for them and, and what's been built up um, and having to know that they can course correct somewhat, I think this film will be far superior. Um, which isn't saying much, but and also um I, I like Monica Rambeau. I think that's that she's got a lot of potential as a character. So I agree. Cool. I just yeah. don't want to see her with them. <laughs> I know. I feel like this, this Marvel got her chance, she got her solo exploration, so did Carol. But mm -hmm. Monica is not. She has to be roped in with those two. So that kind of yeah. sucks, but it is what it is. Right. And yeah, exactly. But we were talking about um oh Slade agrees, Sada. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'd love to see Thunderbolts done right too, my man. Transformers mm -hmm. always been great. Yeah, man. And so but we, we mentioned Captain America, New World Thanks. Order. That's going to be cool. Um, it's confirmed to include several returning characters and introduces some other new ones. Um, but after making a trilogy of movies starring Chris Evans, the events of Avengers Endgame sort of resulted in Steve Rogers giving up Captain America mantle. And, and then they had that show that completely like, what and why did you give the shield? I mean, what's going on, bro? Anyway, but the action pointed to how Captain America would remain part of the MCU even as Evans left the franchise with Anthony Mackie's Sam Wilson position to leave his Falcon name behind and just become Captain America, which is what they should have just did. The Winter Soldier Falcon movie was like maybe just filler. I don't know. Or maybe it was just there to introduce um, Isaiah Bradley. Uh, I don't know. But Oh, the show. Yeah. It yeah. was that show's honestly pretty forgettable, except for Isaiah Bradley. And the right. villain is awful, so it's just like, oh, damn. <laughs> the villain was just terrible. Oh, man. That's, like, one of the worst, honestly, like, for Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was just cast poorly. The guy Yeah. He just didn't look good in the mask. I mean, I don't know. He just looked goofy. It wasn't... Uh, I thought it was hilarious. I mean, when he put the mask on, his big, goofy ears, he just looked horrible. <laughs> in the care... So... But beyond that, but Disney Plus uh, helped explore the story. Captain America Four is where Sam's Captain America will will come, you know, full, you know, really be Captain America. Um, the latest installment of the Captain America franchise here is going to be very different from what we've seen before. Obviously, Chris Evans is not expected to return as old Steve Rogers or Captain America variant. Furthermore, Captain America's trusted best friend, Bucky Barnes, is not returning, uh, as Sebastian Stan is instead helping lead the Thunderbolts movie. So he's Bucky's still around, but it's not going to be in cap. Um, and then there's also a new creative team overseeing, you know, the franchise with the Falcon and Winter Soldier showrunner, Malcolm Spellman, working on the script um, after Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely penned the prior trilogy. So... Here's the characters confirmed so far for the movie. You've got, obviously, Sam Wilson, Captain America, uh, Anthony Mackie uh, will be him. Um, you know, since since his introduction as Captain America, the Winter Soldier, um, Sam, you know, became an invaluable crime fighter alongside Steve Rogers. And then the movie, Falcon and Winter Soldier, changed his status as a secondary character uh, and fully explored his life. After originally passing on the opportunity to become Captain America, he sort of stepped uh, into the mantle after seeing how John Walker and the U.S. government used it and, you know, basically shit on its whole philosophy and everything. And, and so, you know, I guess he realized what 
would have been common sense to I think anyone that he should not have given the shield up. But this allowed him to emerge as the MCU's new Captain America in a very grand way, you know, sort of in the finale and stuff. So it was dramatic. But Sam Wilson's Captain America will play a prominent role, obviously, uh, in part four. So there's not any confirmed details about his individual journey in the movie, but it could include resembling the Avengers. Um, you know, Sam will be tested by a variety of villains and yet winning over the public and making Captain America mantle his own. Uh, so that'll kind of be probably the focus. And then Falcon and Winter Soldier did not shy away from the racist backlash to the idea of a black man being the symbol of America. So Captain America New World Order should once again sort of tackle these issues head on after Sam Wilson earned the Captain America mantle, which I hope would bring Isaiah Bradley into it in some way, um, tell that story somehow. And then... The other actor, uh, Joaquin Torres, will be playing the new Falcon. So <laughs> Danny Ramirez is poised for a bigger role as... Uh, no, did I say Joaquin Torres was going to play? No, Danny Ramirez is going to play Joaquin Torres uh, in, in New World Order. So introduced in the Falcon and Winter Soldier, um, those familiar with, with Torres' comic storyline kept an eye out for teases of him being, you know, becoming a superhero. Um, just like Isaiah Bradley's nephew. Um, and this finally came when Sam Wilson told Torres that he could keep his broken Falcon suit. <laughs> he just uh, gave him the chance to repair it. And uh, while the uh, and then he he was in Top Gun Maverick, too. Um, but he, he only had a small role in the series uh, overall. And there's no question that Joaquin Torres is positioned to be the MCU's new Falcon and fight alongside oh. Sam's Captain America. So it'll be. It'll be um, Black Captain America, Latino Falcon. And so that'll be cool. Since Captain America New World Order will be where Joaquin Torres flies as Falcon for the first time, his role in the movie should focus on him coming, you know, to master his new suit and, you know, how to work it and everything. And then working with Sam should be a benefit for, you know, help help Captain America. But it could also bring up past trauma for Sam, you know, as his last flying partner um during his military days died and uh so that'll be they'll probably bring in that you know ptsd sort of trauma and this should make the dynamic between sam and joaquin more layered in the film give us some substance so if marvel wants to surprise uh the mcu's new falcon could take on you know could take a comic accurate turn and become vampiric possibly connecting him to blade if they want to stick to the comics which would be fucking cool we'll see hollywood ain't that smart uh um, samuel stearns yes um the leader so you guys know who the leader is right the incredible hulk uh he's got the big massive green dome so samuel stearns is arguably the most surprising captain america new world order character confirmed to appear um, last time yeah, we saw him was in uh, 2008's The Incredible Hulk. Um, he was the guy that fell over and he was like, ah, and he like injected himself and he was like, <laughs> he was like going, he was like his head was like getting ready to bust, but he was like in ecstasy. It was crazy. Um, but his absence has been a huge mystery um, among the fandom. Like people are like, what happened to him? Like, what, you know, why didn't anything come of that? Especially as the movie ended with a tease of, Hulk's blood dripping Hulk's into blood dripping. a wound in his head, uh, which, yeah, he didn't inject himself. That's right. It was, he had a wound and, and Hulk's blood like dripped Hulk's into blood. it. And yep. then he was mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's what happened. And so, um, but the comic version of Samuel Stearns becomes known as the leader. And we know that. And, you know, which is a super intelligent villain. That's sort of his power. Uh, he's a, he's a giant green head. Uh, after he's exposed to gamma radiation, but Captain America 4 is now poised to show uh, the same fate for the character in the MCU, which will likely relate to uh, the big Hulk movie when it comes. And I think that blank that blank spot in the slate where they're, they've got the, here's all the movies that are going to be out, there's two blank spots. I'm hoping one's a Hulk and one's an X-Men, but if one's a Hulk, that at least that would be great. 
Um, but it is and expected. One's a Hulk, it'll, it'll save the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. No, he's right because you know that's one of the most. You know, that's one of the biggest complaints. That's one of the biggest wants. That's what people want. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, Hulk's one of the biggest characters in the world. I mean, you basically, it's like the Incredible Hulk, Spider-Man, Batman, and Superman. Those are like the four most popular characters in the world. So the fact that they haven't done a Hulk movie has had, has hurt them. So it will probably save them if that's what that, that blank spot is. Uh, but we know they are going to do it. All right. As soon as the 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 rights, um, the contract uh, runs out, they're gonna do it. We know that, so it's just a matter of time. In the comics, there's a villain group known as the New World Order that Red Skull uh, forms, and since Red Skull is not in the picture anymore, the leader will probably found that same group uh, in the New World Order with hopes of transforming the planet to look more like he wants it to based on who else is appearing in the movie and it's likely that the leader's return will will play a role in red hulk's mcu emergence because red hulk uh should pop out in thunderbolts but thunderbolt ross will be played as captain uh will be played by um harrison ford um and he'll be uh the he, he's the uh third character uh that we know is going to be in captain america new world order but now harrison ford um is 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 going to be recasted because William Hurt, uh, who portrayed the antagonist uh, figure starting in The Incredible Hulk, uh, has has passed away. He was last seen in Black Widow, I think. And the actor um, um, that was playing him uh, was meant for more appearances as Thunderbolt Ross. I mean, William Hurt was uh, was supposed to be you know playing him so they had to recast him right it, it it only makes sense right when the character when the actor playing the character dies you recast the character right <laughs> correct very I'm correct not answering, i'm not answering that the movie finally brought harrison ford to play mcu uh, so we'll see uh, to for, to the MCU to play uh, to play this character. They're gonna they're gonna have to de-age him because right now I'm watching Harrison Ford in a show called 1923, which is a spinoff of Yellowstone, which is mm -hmm. even better than Yellowstone so far. And yes, uh, is. Harrison yes, Ford, is. yeah, Harrison Ford is killing it, but he's old, bro. Like you can see, they they're not de-aging him for that show. He's old. He's playing his current age, and he's up there. So. Um, I would, I would, uh, I don't think I would even want to see Harrison Ford playing Thunderbolt Ross as his age is now. He's just too old um, yeah, for that no. character. But uh, he even says that the de aging is the best that he's ever seen. And it's not just because it's him, but yeah, he, um, he says it looks really good. He's already seen it. He's, he's really proud of it, Harrison. So, but there's not a lot of details more um, known about. Ross's role in in this movie, um, it is expected that he will finally transform into the Red Hulk, though during the movie, um, and this would position him as one of the main villains of the movie and a dangerous threat for uh, you know Sam's Captain America to to have to defeat. Who just popped out and popped in? Sada's back. Okay, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. It. Uh, yeah. As a result. Um, Thunderbolt Ross, Red Hulk transformation could facilitate appearances by Hulk or She-Hulk potentially. And there's also rumors that Thaddeus Ross has climbed the political ladder further and will be the uh, president of the United States in the MCU, which would align with the Captain America franchise's political nature. So that may be Harrison Ford may be the president. Uh, oh, <laughs> I was going to I'm going to save that for last. All right. So then another, the other character that they've cast is Sabra. Um, they've confirmed uh, to introduce a new character in Sabra. It's a new character, a Jewish Israeli superhero. And she'll be played by uh, Shira Haas, who's an Emmy nominee. Apparently, I've never heard of her. But the announcement that Sabra is in Captain America 4 ignited a controversy, though. 
Um, she's often criticized for being racist toward Arabs, um, which is a controversial reflection of the Israeli-Palestine conflict. And it would be a big, you know, if you were going to have an Israeli-Jewish superhero that, you know, people in Israel were going to be fans of, trust me, there's going to be some anti-Arab sentiment. That's just the, they're just, I mean, it's one of the oldest conflicts still going on today. It's thousands of years old. But anyway, Marvel has since come out and stated that Sabra is, freshly imagined she's going to be rebooted for a modern times um you know obviously there'll be no anti-arab sentiments whatsoever uh with the character so moving you know into the movie while it's not clear exactly what role sabra plays in captain america for the addition of a superhero who in the comics works for the israeli government could be telling um the sequel's political tension could involve israel so she could enter the story as a as a potential antagonist uh, before coming to work alongside Sam's Captain America. You know, considering how early Marvel made the announcement, um, it stands to reason that Sabra plays a very big role in the movie and is one of the more important, you know, characters. So, you know, I guess they just needed a strong female role. But last and definitely not least... What I'm most excited about character that is going to be in this movie, Isaiah motherfucking Bradley. Uh, he's the black Captain America. Um, you know, we've talked about it a bunch of times on this site. Uh, Sada's uh, father, Grap Lover, has definitely come on and talked about um, truth and, and stuff like that. So we are very excited for, for Isaiah Bradley. Um, and he's confirmed. Uh, Marvel brought Carl Lumbly aboard to uh to play him in the show falcon and winter soldier and his appearance had such a dramatic impact on sam wilson um because he was one of the black soldiers who underwent experimental super soldier serum treatments um and was then imprisoned by the u.s government for further testing um just basically being abused basically it's sort of a metaphor or or, or analogy i guess of the tuskegee airmen experiment where they injected uh you know a whole regiment of black soldiers with uh, syphilis just to see what it did to them. Um, the secret projects bring a very dark legacy uh, to the history of, of the Captain America mantle and the government's attempt to create a new super soldier after Steve Rogers crashed into the ice. Um, the return of Isaiah Bradley should once again see him play a key role in Sam Wilson's life. I don't know if he's going to just be like a mentor, you know, like old head, just somebody that's like a mentor mentee relationship that they sort of develop um, because the two quickly developed a close bond that included Sam getting a statue built in Isaiah's honor. So it is even possible that the movie will reveal that Isaiah Bradley and Thunderbolt Ross have a past together in the military. And of course, Isaiah's return could also pave the way for his grandson, Elijah Bradley to appear uh, possibly helping set up the Young Avengers because uh, Isaiah or Elijah Bradley is Patriot, the uh, superhero from the Young Avengers, and that's uh, mm. his grand. So, would be really cool if they had him. You know, if they did some like flashback scenes of Isaiah Bradley in the Captain America costume, killing Nazis. Like that would be fucking. Uh, that would be so. That would be. That would just make my year right there. I would just make my <laughs> straight up. They should just give us a like. I mean, they used to give us five episodes anyway. They should just give us a five episode. Yeah, they do special, a Isaiah special Bradley, presentation. Bradley, uh, special yeah. presentation. Yeah, uh, a special presentation would be perfect. They could, yeah, they could re, yeah. they could reenact the truth comic, the the whole truth, yeah. the whole story. They could reenact that in a, in an hour and a half special. It'd be so dope. I wish that. Yeah. And that would be like great insight into also Steve because he knew about this and didn't say anything. MCU Steve, he didn't say anything. In the book, he corrected his mistakes, but in the MCU, he never said a thing. So nope. I feel like that would be nice insight into him. Um, yeah. yeah. Very good would. point. Very good point. I would love to see that. And, and yeah, it, you know, the fact that he doesn't acknowledge it and they've now made it, you know, MCU canon. 
problematic to use a, a word, <laughs> but yeah, they should um, they should definitely they should definitely uh, touch on that, man. Um, where are we at? Well, Hollywood Cap- isn't um, that smart. Nah, no. not that smart. <laughs> yeah, they don't they don't be usually. All right, so let's see where are we at. Sada is always on point. <laughs> oh, huh. You know it. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Carol Danvers um does have a lot of potential, but she's been squandered, I think, in this man, in this MCU. They just <laughs> they they brought her to her limit. You you gave us a character who's invincible. There are no flaws. So there's nothing about her that's interesting. There's nothing about her that's mysterious that I want to learn about. I don't care. You've already given us who she is at her peak. So yeah. why like the only place you could go is backwards and we, we certainly don't want to do that because we don't even like who she is right now. So it's just right. I don't know. It's weird. Yep. They ruined her. Yeah. <laughs> And they've been and no, because they they've been they pushed the hell out of her character and promoted it, and yeah, it was gonna be the next big thing. And a lot of people, you know, see the push as very inorganic, namely criticizing her development as an attempt to give Marvel Comics its own Wonder Woman. That's basically what she's supposed to be, Marvel's Wonder Woman. But all the you know, it, the result was just a big flashy promotion with very little substance. She's, she's there's just nothing there. <laughs> Yeah, she was one of those characters. She was like Doctor Strange. Like, why she was brought in was simply to be like an ex machina in uh, Endgame. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you bring a character in like that, it's just not organic um, and it doesn't usually end up well. So, yeah. 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 But Carol Danvers does have a lot of potential, but, you know, the character, I should say. But, like I said, man, you know, the MCU is just kind of crapped on it. she she doesn't have any villains um you know her supporting cast members and anything resembling an iconic story uh her spotlight has seemingly all been for not i mean or just to promote to make a big female you know a big female character push a big you know it's all about the feminine um you know girl power push that that marvel was doing and I don't know, man. It's just like it's obviously a good thing, but it seems like it just wasn't done well. Um, it one, was, it, the the problem, Reno, is that they tried too much to push the female character to the forefront. This old bait and switch that Marvel did the last two years towards yeah. that that really it just soured fans' taste for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, like you know, like I said earlier, you had Thor. Um, you had uh, Captain Marvel, which is which she's supposed to be the lead, but they don't. They swap out the stories. They swap out the good stories that Marvel already gave us for bad ones from Hollywood writers that know nothing about these characters, yeah, or, or have no or have no connection with them. Um, right. She Hulk. The ending of She Hulk, because they couldn't think of a good ending, they just made her come into the real world. And, Hmm. It was supposedly, supposedly from the writer's mm-hmm. standpoint, it was supposed to be a joke. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a joke because well, hey, it was, was funny. Like, damn, yeah, it was <laughs> funny because we was like, damn, that's what that's what we that's what we paid for. A Disney Plus goes up in price again this year, and this is what I'm paying for. Oh. I'm like, come on, yeah. yeah. Well, one big come thematic on problem, one big thematic problem with trying to force Carol into the Wonder Woman slot was that it. It was unnatural. Marvel has never really had such a oh, role in their universe, you know, and any no. character artificially put into that status would need to suddenly match the iconography of the amazing Amazon, you know, and this meant that Carol would no longer have the flaws that helped her gain, you know, a bit of popularity in the past. Beforehand, Carol was a somewhat cocky woman who regularly made mistakes and had a life filled with trauma. Um, for example, having her powers drained by Rogue because that's why Rogue flies and has you know her powers is because she yeah, she's got yeah, she super yeah. strength. Yeah. And a lot of this was glossed over after she became Captain Marvel. However, any semblance of flawed personality was replaced by a stoic stonewall of a character with no you know depth. But 
um, by no longer drawing from the, the past and, and the, the flaws, you know, and the erasure of the legacy of the original Captain Marvel, basically Marvel, um, much of Carol's push comes off as illegitimate and Marvel refuses to touch upon her older, sometimes less heroic days, but you know, making it seem as if the Marvel Universe's best hero ever just came out of nowhere. That's kind of how they, she just flew in and she was just the best automatic. She was very much Ray from Star Wars. I mean, just came in and, you know, I'm the biggest, I'm the strongest, I'm the baddest. And where did I come from? What's my story? You know, what, who, why should you care? You know, that all that's missing. And such criticisms has many times thrown towards the century character as well, who had the same issue. Um, but even then, the century still had flaws by way of his feud with the void and his mental issues, which that was pretty, pretty big. And whereas Carol is rarely shown in such a relatable light, you know, there's not nobody's nobody's like that. Nobody's perfect. So how can we relate to you? How can we care about you? You know, it's just it's not a character we can care about and this could be compared to superman and wonder woman you know but at least those two earned their heroic statuses by constantly saving and inspiring people carol's reverence is much more synthetic she hasn't she she hasn't done anything to have all this cocky attitude what have you done who have you you know what have you done and so because not, marvel's dying the Marvel Cinematic Universe is dying for a female lead, a strong female lead. Yeah, like you gotta remember, you gotta remember with the success of the first Wonder Woman movie, that was successful, and Marvel wanted to generate that. Whereas, and like James Gunn said, he wanted Black Panther success with the DCU. They wanted Wonder Woman success with Captain Marvel, and they didn't get it because they didn't Same because man. Captain. <laughs> Because Carol's an incredibly for not, Captain Marvel. <laughs> yeah. Right. And Carol right. not she's not a very layered character, you know? Um, no. at least, and one, at least like Wonder Woman. Current, it, like Wonder yeah. Woman is, is is she has a backstory. A very right. good one. She, and is, a she has a future. She has a love interest. Um and Steve. <laughs> uh it's believable. Um it's it's it's, it's organic. It's yeah. It, it's it's written and based in, you know, something that a little girl could look up and strive to be, because not only is Wonder Woman strong physically, she's very strong mentally as well. Well, if um, they would give Carol Danvers some stronger characters to bounce off of, like Carol lacks a supporting cast, you know, in a stable base of operations, which makes her stories inconsistent. You know, giving her right. a group of like allies for her to care about, you know, argue with, banter, hang out would 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 not only raise the stakes of her adventures, but also make her a stronger and more human, more relatable character that we could care about. But, you know, and these friends that she could have could reflect her values and give her something to fight for and protect and let us know what she feels and what she's into, like what she believes in. And the same goes for a love interest, like you said, which you know could spice things up in the could drama department up. but again make her human make her relatable and all these characters must be original cast members original cast however members. you know as stealing from other properties will only cement captain marvel's questionable push so it's got to be it's they just need to get organic with it of course a hero is only as good as their villains right so uh and beyond the scrolls and the kree captain marvel has none of those either Right, there's nothing that she's got no like main nemesis or anything. And too many of her stories involve the multiverse and armies of, you know, alien races, but no like woman or man, no guy, no specific person, you know. With and with some of those uh, being laced with all kinds of other Marvel heroes, um, but there was a two-year run on Captain Marvel, and. And if they do that again, it should feature at least four or five new villains who who give her issues on a physical and personal level uh, with their arcs sort of opening the door for them to return. You know, likewise, their threats yeah. um, should tie into other parts of, of, of her uh, her life, you know, and, and to, to further challenge her character and, and let us see why we should care about her again. 
um, yeah. implementing even like that. The character. Oh, I'm sorry. I interrupted. No, you. no, go ahead. Oh, go oh, ahead. I was just saying, like, even like the um the side characters that she does have, um, uh, who who Monica's mother, whatever her name was, um, and the other exactly. scrolls, they did nothing but just uplift her or state what the obvious with her. They did nothing yeah. that challenged her or her beliefs. Um, so Let's talk about how great she is. Yeah, and you know when you. It's bad enough you have that in the character, but then when it's emphasized with the side characters, it's just like, well, <laughs> I don't really know what you want from me. So, um, yeah. and it, it's so funny, like they're looking for a female lead, and you had that in Black Widow, and you completely dropped yeah. the ball. Um, yeah. Like, why would you give Captain Marvel maybe before Endgame and not Black Widow? Like, Thank knowing that up. she's dying, like. It just doesn't make any sense, and and the you try to rectify is, that. I think it's the reason so is weird. because Captain America uh, or, or Black Widow doesn't have a bunch of powers. She's not interesting enough. She doesn't. She's not strong. Well, that's enough. stupid because she's all espionage, and they've made how many James Bond yeah. films? Like, come on, get out of my yeah. face! Thank you. you. What about, <laughs> yeah. what about Atomic Blonde? Atomic yeah. Blonde is basically. Atomic Blonde. How many it, it, Black Widow S movies have they thrown out there all yeah. this time? Like every other year, we get one, with, you know, a random one that slips under uh, everything, and it's yeah. basically Black Widow. So, you know, um, they wanted their female lead to be able to walk into the room and look at all the other Avengers and be like, "I can kick all of your asses." That's and it. it's like, but the that's, thing is, Black people. Widow could just appear. Maybe not yeah, physically, she, not all of them, would, but she could she definitely do it up here if she wanted to. Right. Um, but like how they, they just say don't Batman understand could the character. Beat the so. yeah. 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 But they just don't understand <laughs> the character because she's so layered um, and she just has like so much going on, but they right. don't tell any of that. So it's just kind of crazy. But I mean, good luck with getting that female lead because so far, y- y'all have a horrible track record. But you know, yes, hey. they do. <laughs> Yes, they do. There was um something I was reading about Daredevil Born Again. Um the new the new Daredevil uh rumored to introduce an X-Men character with ties to Wolverine. Um so we'll see, man. That 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 could be interesting. I don't know how true it is, but that's another show that I think is really going to be good. Um because also um John Barenthal will 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 play Punisher in the show too and I think he said I think they said he's going to be in like 8 of the or 10 of the 18 episodes or something like he's going he's going to be in a lot of it so that'll be dope um um but according to a new rumor Sandrine Holt will be playing a Wolverine supporting character um whatever that means um the casting was announced alongside Marta, uh Margarita Lavita Margarita Laveria um with both of them be- being believed to be playing potential love interests for Matt Murdock Charlie Cox and Wilson Fisk Vincent D'Onofrio um Murphy's multiverse offered more a more specific theory that Holt will be playing Jesson Hone aka Tiger Tiger um T Y G E R T I G E R Tiger Tiger which was created by Chris Claremont who is the goat of X-Men he he basically gave us all the iconic big iconic stories up through Phoenix and all of that he, Chris Claremont created all that and Mark Silvestri and introduced it in 1988. Hone is the heir to a banking fortune who became the most powerful mob boss in Madripoor. Uh, Madripoor is a you know a South Asian island, uh, notorious in the comics for having like just being like a big criminal uh, civilization, basically where just criminals just basically run the place. And um, so she was primarily a supporting character for Wolverine. Uh, while he was hiding out on Madripoor. Wolverine's always in Madripoor. Uh, But Murphy's multiverse suggests that she'll act as an ally to Wilson Fisk, you know, Kingpin, uh, in his new ambition to become the mayor of New York. So Madripoor was previously explored in the MCU uh, in the the, um, Falcon and Winter Soldier show, where um, I think 
they uh they had Zemo in them and they were gonna infiltrate the island and 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 you know in their search for the the power broker, um, the crime lord who 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 had replicated the super soldier serum and was supplying the flag smashers with it. So Falcon and Winter Soldier concluded with the revelation that the power broker was former shield agent Sharon Carter, who who promised uh to use her government contacts to further her goals in Madripoor. But another actor, um, another actor that is potentially going to be joining the cast is Michael Gandolfini. So a lot of you might know who James Gandolfini is. Uh, he played Tony Soprano, um, and this is his son. Um, and while his role in the series hasn't been revealed, it's been reported that he has signed on to appear in the show in 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 future MCU projects. Uh, also unknown is the fate of Deborah Ann Wall and El uh, Eldon Henson, who played Matt Murdock's best friends and co-workers, Karen Page and Foggy Nelson. Uh, and you might also remember Karen Page from True Blood, uh, not Karen Page, uh, and uh, Deborah Wall from True Blood and uh, Eldon Henson. He's been in a bunch of shit. But Cox expressed uh, his hopes that the two would return you know, for the reboot saying uh, i don't know what's going to happen with all the other characters in the new show but i know for a fact that eldon and deborah were the heartbeat of what we did before and the show is a success because of them end quote which i gotta i gotta agree um i think karen and foggy were a big part of that show that that you know yeah. helped make it cool um i really liked the karen page character i thought she was cool foggy was cool so it would be hard. It would back. be, yeah. That's what that's what it's looking like because this is technically a soft reboot. So they're recasting yeah. some, but not all. Basically, that's what a soft reboot is. So, um, and before Born Again, uh, both uh, Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio are going to be an Echo, which uh, will follow uh, uh, Alakwa Cox, uh, which is a deaf, um, you know, audible challenge deaf. Uh, assassin Maya Lopez, who was introduced in Hawkeye. And um, D'Onofrio said that Echo uh, will set up other future stories for Daredevil. Obviously, the two, um, Daredevil being blind, her being deaf, right? Echo, so that, that, sort, of that sort of dynamic. Uh, and the Kingpin saying, uh, Kingpin said, he said, uh, it's, like, it's like full on in the last few episodes of Echo. It's going to be quite something and that leads into, of course, Born Again. So they're that's gonna mess it up right now. Yeah, they're gonna mess it up. <laughs> can't, it, it, listen, Maybe out listen, the gate. Man, listen, <laughs> there <laughs> are there are Marvel stories. People watching, please go out and read them. The one, all right, Door to God Butcher. Go, I mean, Door to God Butcher is a wonderful story. That's a wonderfully beautifully written Marvel story with that yeah. character in it. The Echo uh, storyline with Daredevil is beautiful. It's, 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 it is a literature masterpiece. Yeah, literary. Period. Yeah. Not, even, not even for comics, just period. The way just it was written, the whole story. Yeah. Like, they just, like, you got to understand her and Daredevil fell in love, and she almost mm -hmm. killed Daredevil. Yeah. Until he told her who he was. He had to tell her. And then she had to rethink her whole, you know, and Daredevil knows a lot about Kingpin. So he had to explain mm -hmm. to her, like, look, Kingpin is using you, number one. Number two, he just wants you to kill me, and he's not your friend. But he wants you to—he right. wants to make you think that he's your, you know, you're his daughter, and all. He really yeah. brainwashed and tricked you, and you need to go check yourself before you wreck yourself. But right. Marvel's not gonna—they're not gonna follow that. They're not gonna follow that storyline. They're gonna give us some crazy stuff, something crazy. And I, I don't understand why you would take something that made, like I said before, millions of dollars, and give us a story. That's only gonna make thousands of dollars. Take the million, you yeah, throw the million dollar story out the window. Show thing really. They're not making them, but Echo, um, yeah, Echo already made her debut in in Hawkeye in the Hawkeye streaming series, uh, which turned Al Alakwa Cox into a lead actor almost from the word go, and now she's taking her breakout popularity into her own show with Marvel Studios having just released the first image from the production, and I got that for you. 
So yeah, let's um, give me a see. Can we see that, please? She's also she also uh the only thing they got right was at the end of the Hawkeye series. She did shoot Kingpin and come, but she didn't kill him. Yes. Um, he wound up being no, blinded. Right? Yeah, he wasn't. He wanted yeah. being blinded by the muzzle flash. If something uh, messed up with the gun, he wanted being blinded for a while. But mm-hmm. I, I, I don't hey, um, like I said. Is any of my moderators so in here, Slade? I can't. Do I know. Who's... I keep trying to block. Them. Well, yeah. If you can't delete them, I think you. The only thing you could do is like block them or whatever. Yeah, I Sometimes put him in timeout. Like, yeah. He's blocked for five minutes, yeah. but I need somebody else to. Uh, you need one of the moderators. Where the hell is Slate? Yeah, I don't know. Where did he go? Know. But here is. Um, Shadi, you gonna have to call out. You gonna have to call out the Slate. So. Oh there no! She is. That's Echo. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, there's Echo, and yeah, she's um she's uh a com- Comparatively new character that the mainstream public probably isn't familiar with, um, with before the Disney Plus debut anyway. And um, her backstory includes being the first character to adopt the Ronin identity that MCU would know from 2019's Avengers Endgame and then Hawkeye. So in the comics, Maya slash Echo wore the costume first before passing it to Clint Barton, uh, the Ronin. Uh, costume and the identity um, have have resurfaced in the Marvel universe periodically, including by the by Blade, um, who was also going to be an MCU, obviously. But Echo is a much more than uh, is is much more than the originator of the now worn ninja guys. She's actually currently establishing a unique Marvel Comics legacy that, in many ways, is just beginning. And and she's already has existing ties to the Avengers. Um, she's been a member for a few years now. Wolverine, Daredevil, the Kingpin, and the and the Hand, uh, the criminal organization. Um, more recently, she's become the new host of the cosmic embodiment of life and death and rebirth known as the Phoenix Force. So she's now the Phoenix, uh, which has traditionally been associated with the X-Men and mutants. Um, so Echo's MCU story is hewing closer to her comic book past than it initially seemed like, Stu, and her self-titled Disney <laughs> Plus spinoff just beginning principal production. So now's a good time to break down everything break you need to know everything. about Maya Lopez. Google her, check her out, um, and how she fits into the Marvel Universe and what it could mean for the MCU's future. And um, this includes what the comics tell us about that Hawkeye uh, cliffhanger involving Maya and her her uncle Wilson. Um, but Echo starts out as an antagonist for Daredevil. That's uh, after her father, which is an enforcer for Kingpin's you know mob, uh, is murdered by his own boss. Uh, then 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 Echo is taken by taken in by Kingpin, right? And and he promises her that he's going to raise her as his own child, which he sort of does, and then. But she initially thought to have a learning disability. Um, But so she attends a special school where she learns, you know, that she's 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 not only is she deaf, but she's actually a prodigy in both the creative and martial arts. Um, Under Kingpin's manipulation, though, she grows she grows up blaming Daredevil for her father's death, death. which is what they which is exactly what they had. uh, They had. Um, when when King when when Daredevil threw that stick and hit um, Elektra's father in the head and killed Elektra's father, so same thing like that. Like uh, yeah, the, but that, but in that movie they made it Elektra's dad. It was much more right. doper. If right. it was Echo's dad, right? You know what I mean, like right. it, it, that's that's what I mean about how do you take stories that are already <laughs> written. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why yeah, they, 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 I mean, they have to <laughs> turn them into something that it, that's not even. That's I want that. my vision out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, right, they, it, right. I don't, right. I don't give a damn how it. you do it. They want just give me the story, right? They, they want, want their own vision, I mean. right? Side of you, right? Side of they want their own vision, their own spin, and yeah. your own spin makes no sense. Somebody already sat down and thought about this and made it work. Why yeah. would you go make it unwork? Why would you go unwork it? You're right, Sada. They just want to put their own version out there, their own spin to say that they did it. It's, mm-hmm. it's bullcrap. <laughs> it's bullcrap. Yeah. Well, 
So 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 she takes the name Echo. Um obviously to to go with her her deaf um powers or 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 quirks or whatever and uh you know her, she has a natural talent for mimicking the movements of others right so kind of like taskmaster taskmaster um she adorns her face with a handprint that sort of resembles the bloody handprint left on her face by her by her dying father uh and sets out to kill daredevil so she first meets matt murdock uh, through the machinations of Kingpin. So Echo begins a relationship with Matt while simultaneously hunting Daredevil, not knowing it's Daredevil. But when she discovers Daredevil's secret, that he's blind, um, she sets a trap designed to remove the advantage of his radar sense and fights him nearly to the death. Um, she stops short of killing him, though, when she realizes that he is Matt Murdock. Instead of turning on Kingpin and shooting him, leaving him for dead um so basically but after fleeing the country then maya eventually returns to discover matt murdoch has moved on with his life and is with another woman uh while kingpin who survived his injuries is now incarcerated so kingpin forgives maya for trying to kill him and she leaves again on another soul-searching journey uh, eventually meeting up with wolverine and learning <coughs> of the evil of the evil ninja group the hand so Maya finds a new purpose in her life, you know, by fighting the hand and, and taking on the identity of Ronan and eventually joining the Avengers, um, which she still associates with. Um, but in the MCU, so as we stated, Maya Lopez was the original secret identity of Ronan, a masked ninja who debuted, you know, in the new Avengers uh, with readers knowing a recognizable character was in the suit, but not who it was. Though plans originally called for Daredevil to be revealed as the secret hero operating as Ronin, the plot was switched around and Echo was put into the role. Um, though in another yeah. odd controversy, the secret uh, was accidentally spoiled ahead of the story's release, but that's another story. But Maya as Ronin initially came into contact with the Avengers while she was fighting the Hand in Japan. So after taking on the Hand's relation, uh, leadership, um, in, including Silver Samurai, uh, Viper, um, alongside the Avengers, uh, Echo remains in Japan as Ronin to sort of monitor the hands' activities and play, you know, vigilante and and protect the the the, the you know fight crime. But she's taken captive, uh, leading the Avengers to to set out to rescue her from the hand, you know, before she can be subverted into becoming one of their sort of brainwashed assassins. Um, she comes uh she 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 comes into contact with Electra, right? And Electra at this time is a brainwashed hand assassin. So things yeah. get, you know, they take a dark turn when Echo actually stabs her and reveals that Electra, the, the Electra in question, was not the actual Electra Nachos, uh, yes. but a scroll who was impersonating her. So secret invasion. This discovery kicks off the secret invasion storyline itself soon to be also adapted uh, as a Disney plus MCU show, uh, but in which the scrolls are revealed to have infiltrated earth society in the guise of, you know, known heroes, uh, people that, you know, other people from the Marvel universe. And that leads uh, into the dark rain era. So dark rain is a great um, crossover, which put Norman Osborn in charge of a new shield type group called hammer um in the dark rain era echo gives the ronin mantle to clint barton to hawkeye and then from there echo continued her pattern of infiltrating criminal groups undercover teaming up with moon knight to take on you know count nefaria before returning to new york and teaming up with daredevil again um most recently uh echo has once again been uh serving as a member of the avengers um, a, a member that a membership that has taken her into a totally new role in the in the Marvel universe as the current host of the Cosmic Phoenix Force. So she's got crazy power like a god right now, having won the Phoenix's favor in the tournament um, in the story Avengers Enter the Phoenix, um, where she she. Um, beats everyone and, and wins basically wins the 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 right to have the phoenix 
Force. And she basically, uh, she recently started in her own limited series. Um, I think I've got one. It's called Phoenix Song Echo, which explored the way that Echo uses her, her newfound Phoenix powers. Let me see if I got that. You know what? Oh, let's see. Show us the merchandise. <laughs> yeah, Echo's a great character, so you gotta gotta read that story. Yeah, I, I don't know if I wonder what they're gonna do with her because, as it stands, I'm pretty indifferent to the MCU Echo, so I don't know. But maybe uh, they'll do something with her. The solo, it's not what yeah. I and it's all about I I it's all one. about representation. Yeah, it's all about representation. Yeah, pretty much. This, uh, oh, yeah, it's not what I thought it was, but I'll show you what it is anyway. It's just the Phoenix book, but Resurrection. I love that cover. Love the cover. Yeah, that's basically yeah. why I got it. Let's see what's going on over here. Oh. Okay, Reno. Uh, <laughs> Reno, I just death stroke that sucker. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Boom, sliced and diced. Phoenix Force, yep. Herbert, what's up? Peace, peace. Peace, peace. Um, ba 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 ba. <laughs> Uh, she better watch out for Castle. Wonder if Disney <laughs> Plus will make Frank a part of the hand. That would be awesome. Nah. Uh, no, I'm sad. I think Disney knows it needs to step up a few notches. They know they have had bombs like Love and Thunder, Eternals, etc. They're going to have to go hard coming up. Yeah, man, absolutely. They don't have a choice. <laughs> oh, shit. My man, Legion of Comics, salute. What's good, oh, homie? He said, lesson of the day, do not operate your own snow your own snow cat. Oh. Mm, just leave that to the professionals. I hope he leave mm -hmm. acting. Leave, you don't. You don't have snowcat operators trying to act, okay. so you shouldn't have actors trying to drive snowcats. You know. I hope so, he. You know, just. Uh, but uh, Echo, Echo is now. She's now um, debuted in the MCU. Her her debut is complete. Um, played in this Hawkeye, good. and we she's actually by. Good. Yeah. She's being played by a Native American actor, uh, Alaqua Cox, and um, of the Mena, uh, Menominee, sorry, yes, Menominee tribe uh, and Mohican nations, um, making her the first Native American MCU hero. So that's, uh, that's, um, what's the fucking word? <laughs> Monumental, I don't know, but you know what I mean. But uh, it's a big <laughs> yeah. deal. Um, yeah. But Maya, Maya Echo is uh, she's the MCU's she's the MCU's second deaf hero. Um, there was actually uh, the debut of actor Lauren Ridolf as Makari in the Eternals was the first deaf hero. Oh um, yes, but, yes. Mm -hmm. But both um, both Alakwa Cox and 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 um, Lauren Rid Ridloff are actually deaf. Um, the actors are really yes. deaf in real life. As such, um, the use of uh, American Sign Language played a significant role in the Hawkeye. In Hawkeye, um, additionally, Cox has a below-the-knee prosthesis that plays a visible factor in her fighting style as Echo. This is obviously a departure uh, departure from the comic books, as you know, Maya Lopez does not have a limb difference on the page. Um, but another key difference uh, between the comic book Echo and live action Echo is that the live action version hasn't displayed any clear cut superhuman ability. Um, no. Although she didn't gain any of that until uh, recently when she became the Phoenix. Um, so that's not really a, an issue. Um, her, her photographic reflexes have been explained in the comics to uh, to be an innate talent, not a superhero, but more like a, a peak human. Yeah, ability. like a peak human. Yeah. Like Batman, so like right. Batman, right? Or cap, yeah. But f uh, flashback scenes to her childhood seem to imply that the MCU MCU version is a skilled MCU fighter version. just skilled by fighter. observing and processing, uh, you know, the te the tendencies of her opponents, you know, Taskmaster style, basically copycatting. And but like we said earlier, uh, other aspects of Maya's other comic book story actually beat her to the screen, uh, forming one of the main bases of Hawkeye's plot. Namely, it's Echo's legacy as Ronin that connected her most directly to Clint Barton in, in, in comic book terms, at least. In the MCU, Ronin is the identity taken on by Hawkeye during the time of the five-year gap between when Thanos, you know, the snap, 
uh, and, and, and everything. So when the Avengers built their own Infinity Gauntlet to undo Thanos' decimation. And in the now concluded streaming series, Clint's past as Ronan came looking for him, specifically in the form of Echo. So she blamed Ronan for the death of her father, like in the comics, who was a lieutenant in Wilson Fisk's criminal organization, like in the comics. And the story reflects, you know, her comic book arc um, seeking vengeance against Daredevil, at least. But thanks to Echo's comic book history as an enemy and lover of Daredevil and one-time enforcer for Kingpin, Vincent D'Onofrio's return as Wilson Fisk and um, debut in the official MCU was anticipated by fans and Marvel Studios, uh, I think, delivered pretty well. As for Charlie Cox and Daredevil, uh, that's a different story. Uh, but, but we know now for sure Maya has known Fisk uh, since he was a young child, MCU version, um, looked up to him as a beloved uncle and worked for him as her father did, becoming a weapon for the Kingpin, um, as, Clint, as Clint put it, uh, due in part to her need for vengeance against Ronan, who killed her father instead of Daredevil. So basically they switched it and made it Ronan instead of Daredevil. Um, full of which doubt. Will, which we're okay with. But it just got to be good. good. That's fine. That's yeah, exactly. be good. Just yeah, long as you write good. it. Like, like we, right, long as you write it. Well. That's all. That's all we ask. We we don't want. We we just don't want this, this uh, woke Hollywood. Uh, nothing to do with the character or the story, uh, iterations that we've been getting in last year. Nora right. Rad is right when when he made that last comment that you put up. Um, they got to step it up. They've been bombing lately with certain things and some of the, like Eternals. Okay. It wasn't wasn't bad, wasn't good, but we just don't remember it. Like we can do with it, and we can do without it. You know what I mean? Like if you never brought it up again, we wouldn't care. Thor: Love and Thunder was a disappointment because a lot of people were looking forward to it. They were looking forward yeah. to seeing Love and Thunder. Um, yeah. Eternal, like I see, Eternals just left us like, huh? She Hawk left us scratching our heads. Like you started out good, in the middle you were you were okay, but then you ended it. It just left us with a question mark. Exactly. I mean, you have to you have to have some consistency. And then, you know, Spider Man was pretty good. Um uh Doctor Strange, uh America Chavez could have been left out of that movie because all it did was push all it did was push another female character to the front of a movie that she was not the star of. Um, um Dr. Ron, Dr. Von Hoots comics from the spiral dimension, <laughs> not to interrupt you, Stu, but um not all of that's gonna be in the Hawkeye movie. It's like in the show and it's like you know mixed up, but yeah, hey Doc, what up? I do not blame you. And shout out to Marshall Warpath, my 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 Native American homie from Instagram. What's good? He says Echo. Um yeah, yeah. So she's definitely yeah, we want Echo, man. Echo Native is American dope, man. character. Absolutely. And yes. and I think it was Norn Rad. I sold an Echo comic. That's what he was saying. I, I remember now. Yeah, he said, said he sold you. Yeah, he said that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Nice. That, that, that whole that because Echo had yeah, she had the cover. She was, I think the that might have been the man, was that the the uh Ghost Rider one? I, I can't remember, but um full of doubt and now believing Kingpin wanted him dead and set him up to be killed by Ronan, just like in the comics. Uh, she breaks away from him in the Hawkeye finale, in the finale of the show, uh, which will likely set um, her on her hero's journey in, in her own Disney Plus series in 2022 or 23. Uh, but not before the Kingpin senses that she's come to to believe, you know, that, that he killed her father and orders her killed. So, which which leads to one last confrontation, uh, and Maya, Kingpin, Hawkeye, cliffhanger, familiar to comic book readers. Um, but Echo's apparent shooting off camera of Kingpin seems to be a direct reference to the story, Daredevil parts of a whole, and that's the one in which King Echo actually does shoot Kingpin in the head, attempting to kill him, uh, but of course he survives because he's Kingpin. Uh, but this may indicate that he similarly he'll 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 survive this one too in the spinoff, uh, perhaps being being blinded uh, as he was in the comics. Um, but whatever way it plays out, we do know for sure that 
Echo Echo's MCU story uh, is to be continued. Uh, more to come for sure. And I hope, you know, I hope they really do her right. I mean, I hope they do us right by doing her right. I hope we get a really good version of Echo because it's a really cool character. It's a lot of potential, just like so many of the characters that they've completely trashed. So hopefully, <laughs> man, hopefully they won't they won't screw us on Fingers this one. Crossed. Yeah, big time, big time. Big, big time. Um Sup six element gangsta boo. Oh yeah, yeah she passed boo. away. Yeah, passed away, right? oh, now, I don't know about the rest of y'all. But I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a three six fan. I, like <laughs> I know, I know. Man, I'm gonna miss I'm gonna miss gangsta boo, man. They say apparently she had some type of overdose. That's what they're saying right now. Yeah, oh, oh. that's what I yeah, but it's sad if that's what if that's the case because she's it really is she's only in her forties, man. I mean, yeah, man. like that's crazy. Younger than I am. Uh. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah, she. Um, they said, uh, yeah, she's forty three. She, um, the ra- uh, her death was confirmed by her label mate, uh, DJ Paul, who 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 we know uh, from Three Six. Yeah, six, um, yeah. Who, that's my man. Yeah, too. he posted a photo of her um, DJing. Um, in the tribute, and um, but yeah, her cause of death isn't it's not been like reported officially, but they kind of no, yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah Memphis, just, Tennessee. Um, her real name was Lola Memphis. Mitchell, yeah, yeah, shout out to Memphis. Um, yeah, she died around 4 p.m. They said, uh, Paul DJ Paul's Instagram post was flooded with condolences. Um, with, with two chains was on there saying, Man, and little John was like. Man, we was just together three weeks ago. Rest well, Quinn. I think he means Queen. Um, yeah, uh, a rep for Gangster Boo um, didn't immediately return uh, the request for for a comment, but uh, the late night tip uh, rapper was the second female member of Three Six Mafia after K Nine, and she went on to release various solo albums in addition to appearing in um, five. The first five of 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 three sixes uh, studio albums. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she was. That's it. Don't sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't After sleep. she joined, um, I think she joined in the in the nineties, and then she left the group in the early two thousands to to launch her solo career and mixtapes and stuff. But she was featured in songs by like Gucci Mane, Outkast, The Game. Oh like, yeah, she, she had a good yeah, she was, she was, she was that girl. Yeah. She was the Roxanne Shantae of the South. That's all I can tell. Ah, that's, all I, can that's tell. Sad. I can give you that. I can give you that much. She, uh, <laughs> you know, what I mean, like to listen to those albums, and she's on there. Like it ain't like she was just like an afterthought. She's right. on those albums. She's on songs and everything. She's just, you know, and I like Three Six Man. I, I have, I think I got their first the hell was like, that? five or six albums. Oh, welcome back. Yeah, I don't know what just happened. It was weird. Oh, <laughs> yeah. At least they haven't made her a joke. joke. Yeah. yeah. I just uh, said that. Yeah, that's what I was good. Yeah. That's what I just said. Yeah. yeah. She was she was I mean, she gonna be missed, man. You know, we, we lose we lose a lot of people, a lot of rappers, a lot of people, man. All I can say is people take care of yourself, man. Um, well recommend Dr. Do Von what you gotta do. Recommend a, a good three six album for Dr. Von. He says uh he only has a surface level of knowledge with three six. I personally don't I couldn't tell you a three six album. I was more of an outcast guy, but um Stu, you could tell him definitely like, what's, a, what's a dope, <laughs> what's a dope <laughs> most known album? most a dope one is most known unknown. I like that the one was, with that scissor was sipping on the that's, scissor. That's spinners, that's the more spinners and all that on there. Okay, yeah. Um Sip, on I know spinners. I know most most known no, unknown uh was the last one that they did together. Before they uh before they supposedly split up, um, Project yeah. Pat's first album is dope. Uh, cause cause like a lot of the spinoff stuff they did was just it was just dope. Like um, World Domination, that was dope. Uh, you got uh, but my favorite is uh, is Choices too. The setup, most known unknown. Oh, I, I was, got it. Choices Unbreakable was good. 
I mean, it's a lot you can go. Oh, you can this go one. The... Now, wait, yes. wait. My favorite. I was like, I thought my he made this too. <laughs> my favorite three six mafia of all time. I, I say the one I bump the most even to this day. I like them all. Right. What had to be when the smoke clears. Now that joint. <laughs> now that joint. You know. <laughs> Boy, that's mm. got syrups on it. That's got spinners on it. That's got. Uh, oh, okay. That's that's wait, got so eight. That's what is got. It? Uh, it's, it's a mix. Or it's a compilation. It's a, no, that's an album. It's an album. It's, it's like a best of. Or something? No, that's an album. That's a straight oh. album. But you said it, it's spinners, album. scissor. No, no, spinners. Those songs are on that album. Oh, okay. Spinners, so that's the, that's scissors, the album and all that. Scissor. Okay, what's the name? Yeah, that's of the it? album with scissors. Uh, most known. Say? Most known. Most known. Now, when the smoke clears. When, 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 when the smoke clears. When the smoke clears. Okay. When the smoke clears. It's part of that choices. That choices. They did like, like the albums are called choices, and then you had like chapter it. one. Chapter two, so you got mystical styles was all right to me, but when they came out with that chapter one, the end, everything after chapter one, I say from '96 to I say '08, that's that's I lo I loved everything they did in that time period. '96 to '08, I loved everything they did. So you mm -hmm. got chapter one, the end. You got chapter two, world domination. When the smoke clears, you got choices. Um, mm -hmm. The Unbreakables, Choices 2, the setup was good. But the last two, Most Known, Unknown, and Last to Walk, dope. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with dope. my goddamn title. I'm trying to find. Dope albums. Dope albums. When the Smoke Clears was dope. Uh, choices was dope, man. Listen, I go on and on for days about 3-6. Don't get me started. Because I like 3-6. Right. I, I think that they're, I think out of all the Southern groups, uh, they don't get I put it to you like this. They are to me the Wu Tang of the South. And or like the Midwest, because they kinda like in the Midwest, but they in the South, but they kinda like in the Midwest. But to me, when you talk about Southern rap, three six is the Wu Tang of that. That's 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 my version of the, of the Southern Wu Tang. All right. Because yeah. they consistently they consistently put out music that influenced I'll say 90% of the trap music you hear today. I, I, I'm, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that only for the simple fact that Damn. nobody, no stampings, because nobody was doing what they was doing at the time. And beat-wise, everything you hear beat-wise is what they were already doing. And everybody mm -hmm. else just took it and tried to run with it and get the same success. Um, You can stand that style side. I'm, I'm going to keep that. Man, keep that. Stamped. Second oh. day of the new year. Got two stamps. And the thing today. with them was, it was a lot of them. When you, when you talk about the group, it was a lot of them. I think it was like, I don't know, bro. It was just a lot of them, man. They do it. Yeah, Project Pat, DJ Paul, uh, Gangsta Boo, uh, Crunchy Black. Crunchy I mean, they all, Black. yeah, they all, I mean, they're all hip hop icons that don't get no credit. I'm keeping that a buck. I'm, I'm going to throw, I throw that out there. I did anybody. I ain't, well, I ain't <laughs> with nobody about hip hop, but. They don't get the credit they deserve. I will say that wholeheartedly, and I mean that. 36 does not get the credit they deserve for their mm. contribution to hip hop. You know, Southern or Midwest, because they're like, Memphis is like part of the South, but it's also kind of like the beginning of the Midwest, too. But they influenced a lot, man. They influenced a whole lot. And so you figure from, from Texas all the way over to Georgia, down to Florida, you get 36 influenced a lot, man. Yeah. No, nah, they did. They they were big. They were big. Uh, <clears throat> they're huge in the South, man. Oh, yeah, um, remember, no remember they did hard. Remember uh, hard out here for a pimp, like hustle and flow. That was hot. They was bumping that on the radio hard, bro. <laughs> that was actually a guy named um, Al Capone. Um, but yeah, Three Six did the music, did the pr production and shit for that. Yeah, hard out um, here for a pimp. Yeah, the they won a Grammy. Movie. Or they won a they won an Oscar for that shit. Yes, they did. And they were the yes, first, they they're the only rap group to ever win an Oscar for for their song, something like that. They were the first or whatever. But Damn. more recently, uh, uh, Gangsta Boo uh, began working with, um, okay, began working <laughs> with uh, certain music outlets like Up Rocks and to put out new music and performances. And um, early this month, well, December, 
Uh, she shared a video of her live performance of I'm Fresh um, in, um, in, in partnership with uh, Up Rocks. And I was trying to play it. Oh, shit. Well, never mind. I don't know why I, I can't play it. It's not working. Boom. And don't forget, and don't forget, uh, tear the club up. Don't forget, tear the club up. That's the <laughs> club up. Yeah, it's a classic. Tear the club up. Classic. Tear the club up. I'm like, I'm right. <laughs> but yeah, man, she was too young, bro. She was, she was 43, man. Way too young. Yeah, that's too young. Yeah, that is too young. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, the youngest we ever had died. That was a try. Was Jimi Hendrix? I mean, he his mm-hmm. career literally, his career probably lift. His career probably took off the day he died. To be honest with you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, maybe wow. a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, super group album. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Tupac um, started. Was going to start that. That was a Tupac project. Never got off the ground. Yeah, uh, Nation of Millions. Yeah, yeah, never got off the ground. But three six is just not giving the, the props that they they do, bro. Um, they are, like I said, when it comes to the South, they're one of the great super, they're one of the great groups of the South, man. I listen to all music because I'm eclectic, so I listen to everything. Um, I, I don't, you know, I don't try to push, you know, one thing or another to anybody. I just, I just listen to all hip hop. And whatever form it comes in, because I believe hip hop is universal, man. It's rebel music, man. Um, uh, I think hip hop has to get back to that, being that rebel music. Yeah. Um, and I like, I like anybody from anywhere that has that rebel attitude when they come with their hip hop. And that's what I always liked about Three Six is they had that rebel, hardcore hip hop attitude that I could get with, man. Yeah. And that's, I think that's why I think that's why I own about ten albums by them. And mm-hmm. mixtapes, mm-hmm. including mixtapes. <laughs> so I got it all. Nah, I do. So it was they, they, they. When they came out, it was. I was like, "Damn, who are these jokers?" I went and bought. I think it the first <laughs> one I bought was uh, was one of the smoke plays. I think nah, that wasn't that one. Choices. It was choices. The choices. One of the choices series. I bought that man. I was like, damn. I was just hooked after that. I just started buying all of them. <laughs> yeah, I forgot this one too. Oh, forever jealous. Man. A great post. I know. Thank you, Sada. <laughs> forever jealous. Yeah, come on, bro. Come on, got everything, man. I can't get <laughs> They got it all. But no, nah, I can't get nothing up there, bro. I just be getting lucky sometimes because nine That's times out of ten, we don't have shit. <laughs> it seems like oh. it. When you put it all together, well, your well, your version that they don't have nothing <laughs> is uh, I, I would like for my Walmart to not have nothing. Yeah, <laughs> like your Walmart has nothing. Uh, that's that's how I want my Walmart to be. I'd be like, man, they ain't got nothing but this. <laughs> so all they got, well, I mean, damn, could have had more. Yeah, yeah, I, I want I want their version of nothing. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Oh man, you want to fall off. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get, trying to get. Uh, oh, that's nice. Yeah, I'm trying to, is that, is that nice Battle Cat? Oh, is that Panther and uh, Skeletor? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's dope, man. That's a dope miniature joint. I like to have one of those. Where'd you get that from? Walmart. <laughs> I don't know. I dare not check my Walmart. Oh such, no, no, no. For such pivotal trinkets, because <laughs> I know lost not have you know that might have been from uh, Target. I might have got that at Target. Mm, my Target ain't that great either, bro. My Target. <laughs> oh please, uh, Target. <laughs> no, my Target. Like, my Target. Like, my target I don't have like a, a Target in Franklin, zone. but when I go to a demilitarized zone, like <laughs> bombed so out like target, Baghdad, man. looking like bro, it be stuff everywhere, man. They, <laughs> they, they on the, and then the shelves be like empty, like yeah. Like, like, like it's like toy so disorganized yeah. and empty. Like, <laughs> and I'm, yeah, right, right, yeah. That toy section is like the land that time forgot. <laughs> yeah, straight up. You be like, yeah, you be looking like, like, damn. like, like this is what we got. Like we went yes. to, took my son to get a gel blaster from uh, from Wal- uh Target. I was like, why? Oh, yeah. Why is this even? Bro, I was like, why is this even? Nothing's here. Like, why is this even here? 
So we had to order him one. We ordered him one off of, uh off of Amazon instead. Better luck, man. Yeah, way better luck. <laughs> Alright, so that clean uh, target. So he's the time. reason why all the yeah. shelves are empty. Alright, right, right, right. you got a yeah. good target, bro. Oh man. My target but, sucks, man. My target that well, I, it's not really in Franklin, but it's in Chesapeake, which is a much bigger city. So, um, the Walmart that's right across from that target is probably a lot like your Walmart. Don't never have shit ever. I mean, bear like you lucky if there's one Marvel Legends or one GI Joe classified or one that's DC. Well, we, we need to get together, man. The three of us need to get together and start our own toy store chain. Toys R Us is all, man. I don't know, man. Listen, people lied before it got money and launched. They got people have lied and got money shot and launched million dollar projects that still stand to this day. Like he man, they lied, but look at it. They had to to get off the ground. We just gotta think of a good lie to get some money and start this toy company. Wow, I just realized his uh his little armor, his little helmet comes off. Panther, Panther. Oh, that's dope, man. Like Battle Kid. Nice. That's dope, man. That's dope, dope. Nice. Yeah, he's like a little, uh, this shit was probably like, you know, probably 10 bucks or something. But, yeah. I yeah. would just need a He Man and a Skeletor, and I'd be good. I'll set yeah, up on the computer stand, keep it moving. If they would have had a Battle Cat with He Man, I would have grabbed that too. But that's all they had was this one. Oh, man. oh shit well y'all man it's been two and a half hours uh we have done a great show we had a lot of fun i thank everybody for coming and chilling and, and chopping it up with us um we got a great lineup this month we got some more guests and everything coming so but every monday and every wednesday and every saturday at 6 30 p.m eastern time we're gonna be right here live for y'all kicking it telling y'all the 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 the, the latest current events in hip hop and comic books and uh and uh our next show Wednesday I don't think we have a special guest but we have a lot of cool Star Wars shit to talk about so see you guys Wednesday at 6 30 and um after that we'll be back for Saturday for DC Power Hour for this week and that'll wrap up the week and January 30th Look out for my man Beto, who's gonna come on and talk to us about his uh, his current projects. That's the man that hooked up these super dope hip hop versions of comic book covers, famous comic book covers. Uh, very inspirational to the Sixth Element. So we can't wait to talk to him. And uh, that's it, man. Peace to Nora Rad. Peace to Slade. Sada is always on point. Peace to Jameliquin. Peace, peace, peace to Dr. Van Hoots. Peace to Norrin Rad. Everybody that came through, man, kicked it with us, man. We appreciate y'all. Marshall Warpath, big shout out. And uh, I think that's everybody. Oh, no, Legion of Comics. Salute, salute, my brother. And uh, that, if I missed you, man, if I missed anybody, man, I'm sorry, man. We appreciate you. And we really do. We're not just talking. Let me put this guy in time out over here. All right, y'all. <laughs> peace, peace, peace. Peace. <laughs> peace. <laughs> <laughs>